Welcome to Fiction Narratives. Chapter 81, Translucent and Queen Maeve. The Deep was stunned by Li Yu's attack. He didn't he expect Li Yu to attack him. He also didn't he expect Li Yu to be so powerful. He didn't he even have the time to react before he was sent flying. And because Li Yu attacked with lightning, the Deep's body was still twitching for quite a while. A trace of electric current flickered from time to time on his body. But the deep S body was much stronger than ordinary people, and Li Yu's attack was meant to teach him a lesson instead of to kill him, so his injuries weren't very serious. Still, his body felt numb from the electrocution, so the deep really didn't he want to experience it again. The deep could only struggle to get up after dozens of seconds. His eyes were filled with fear when he looked at Li Yu, with some resentment mixed in at the depth of his heart. But he didn't he dare to show any of it. Li Yu's attack just now was obviously just a casual blow, yet it was already so unbearable. If Li Yu found out about his resentment, the full strength attack would probably end his little life right there. Therefore, the Deep said nothing after getting up and simply staggered away. Starlight, if anyone dares to bully you like this again, come find me. I'll help you teach him a lesson. Li Yu silently watched as the Deep left. The Deep was actually a little pitiful. He went too far with these things in the show, gaining the hatred of the viewers. However, it seemed like the screenwriters wanted to whitewash him somewhat, so they put forward his concern for marine animals. They showed him helping a trapped dolphin back to the sea. Unfortunately, he accidentally killed the dolphin while controlling it. Later, because his action against Starlight was exposed, he was sent away to a remote place. This exile gained some sympathy from the people. but. If you do this. Starlight said hesitantly, her eyes looking at Li Yu with worry. Just like her, Li Yu had offended an old member right after joining. They would probably be targeted in the future. Don't worry. You don't have to worry about me. Nobody can touch me. Li Yu said confidently. He wasn't he just showing off because he liked her face. If his plan for tomorrow succeeded, he didn't he know if he would still stay here. All right but. I'm beginning to doubt if coming here was the right choice. It was my mother's dream since I was young that I would grow up to be a respected superhero. And I was born with superpowers, so I was on track to fulfill her dream. My mother set up a harsh training plan for me. I almost had no time for rest. I was training even as my friends played together, and that training continued even now. My future was set in stone by my mother, who made it my goal to join the Vought Company as a superhero. My mother told me that my father would finally regret it when he saw me become a superhero. She wanted to proudly say that her daughter is a superhero. I have lived up to my mother's expectations. I worked hard on my training, even sacrificing any chance at friendship. And now, finally, I have the opportunity to join the superheroes here. However, after coming here, I found that this place is different from what the world knows it. The superhero that I used to idolize, the Deep, forced me. I'm very confused right now. I don't know if joining this place is right or wrong. I've always wanted to become a superhero who helps innocent people, just like you. Li Yu's heart ached as he watched Starlight go through a crisis of faith. For such a good girl to be born in this dark world. If she was born in Marvel's world, she could definitely become a true superhero. Unfortunately, Li Yu could only think about it in his heart. Starlight, you have to know this. No matter what, you can't change others. However, you can change yourself. You just have to follow your heart and not forget your true goals. Just do what you think is right. Li Yu really didn't he know how to comfort people, so he could only bite the bullet and try his best to comfort Starlight. Well, I feel much better after letting it all out. Thank you for what happened today. I'll go back first. See you tomorrow, Li Yu. A smile finally returned to Starlight's face. Despite the horrible incident she had faced, she was very glad that she had known Li Yu. Starlight smiled at Li Yu and left after saying goodbye. See you tomorrow. Li Yu, who had been busy the whole day, walked into the bathroom. His brow furrowed slightly when he entered, but he immediately relaxed. Li Yu pretended not to notice anything and walked straight in before suddenly reaching and grabbing in a direction with his right hand. But he found nothing. 
Li Yu lunged, his movement as fast as lightning. His right hand seemed to grab something, but nothing was visible to the naked eye. Li Yu didn't he hold back and sent an electric current through his right arm. Ah! Let go! A scream suddenly came from the seemingly empty air that he grabbed. Following the shout, a naked figure slowly emerged. It was translucent, of the seven. Translucent s skin could become transparent, and it was as hard as a diamond. However, his weakness was his fear of electricity, so Li Yu could be said to be his worst enemy. Just a little bit of lightning was enough to make him reveal his figure. If I ever find you snooping around again, I'll let you experience something worse than death. Li Yu said in a cold tone before he threw the naked figure out of the door with one hand. The figure immediately turned transparent and disappeared after touching the floor. Humph, I hope you'd take my word seriously. Otherwise, your death would be very miserable. Li Yu couldn't he help but think of translucent s tragic fate. This incident was a minor one, so Li Yu didn't he think too much about it. When Li Yu was about to leave, he bumped into a woman. She was wearing skimpy armor that left her thighs exposed. She looked very sexy. Li Yu was familiar with this woman. She was a member of the Seven, Queen Maeve. Knock off Wonder Woman. Are you Li Yu? I heard that you just joined the Seven, and yet you already taught two old members a rude lesson. I must say, you are the most arrogant person I have ever seen. Queen Maeve said to Li Yu. What, are you going to avenge them? Meanwhile, Huey was wandering outside and got cornered by an uncle with a black beard. Chapter 82, Billy Butcher Huey was currently very irritable and depressed. No matter where he went, he couldn't escape a train s advertisement, even on the packages in the convenience store he worked at. Seeing a train s portrait reminded him of his dead girlfriend, and the look a train s eyes as the superhero stared at him with her blood all over the superhero suit. It was as if an endless nightmare haunted Huey, drowning him. In the lonely night, Huey was on his night shift alone. He was no longer interested in the interview programs related to the superhuman on TV. He was preoccupied with the thought of whether he should insist on bringing a train to court when a bearded man showed up uninvited to the store. You must be Huey. I know that your girlfriend was not in the middle of the road at that time. She was just on the side of the road. A train lied. The bearded man directly confronted Huey with shocking words. He had no idea how the man could know about this. Who are you how do you know Huey asked the man in front of him in a surprised tone. I also know that you hadn't he signed the confidentiality agreement, and you didn't he accept the tens of thousands of dollars in compensation. The bearded man's next words shocked Huey even more. Who are you are you spying on me Huey asked again, in a serious tone this time. I am Butcher, Billy Butcher. Who I am is not important. The important thing is, do you want to do something for your dead girlfriend? Ultimately, Huey left with the bearded man named Billy. Huey learned along the way that Billy was an FBI agent. Of course, Huey had no way of knowing that Billy was lying and was no longer an FBI member. But Billy also told Huey some truth. For example, Billy told Huey that the superheroes would directly or indirectly kill hundreds of civilians every year. These incidents were covered up by Vought International, never reaching the ears of the masses. The death of Huey's girlfriend was just one inconspicuous accident among hundreds. But, how could so many incidents remain hidden? Huey asked in his heart. No matter how capable Vought International was, they couldn't possibly hide everything. They couldn't hide everything, but when some things inevitably get reported, they used their powerful PR department to push the blame onto the victims, just like with your girlfriend. Because of the popularity of Vought International as superheroes, their existence brought benefits to all kinds of industries, and even the government. None of them would want the superheroes to fall from grace. The ignorant masses didn't he want their superhero idols to be exposed to all kinds of scandals, either. They willingly believed the propaganda over the truth, no matter how outlandish. Billy's words completely shocked Huey. He recalled his girlfriend's death. It was exactly as Billy said. A train completely pushed the blame on his girlfriend, and the people who saw the news also supported A train. No one had said a word in defense of his girlfriend. They were more willing to believe the words of the righteous superhero A train. Nobody dares to provoke the superheroes that strayed off their path, 
but I am their nemesis. I will punish them in my own way. Huey raised his eyebrow. He didn't he know what gave Billy the confidence to say such things. So, do you want to come with me? Liu defiantly faced Queen Maeve's curious gaze. Queen Maeve scanned Liu up and down before silently walking past him. How baffling. Liu muttered in a low voice. He did not stay here for long, directly leaving the headquarters of the Seven. I hope that you and that starlight girl could keep your heart true. Don't be like me, eroded by darkness, defeated by reality. Liu and Starlight reminded Queen Maeve of her own past. Just like them, she once fantasized about being a superhero that everyone admired. Unfortunately, things didn't he go as she wished. She couldn't he stay true to her dream. In the end, she ended up becoming the person she used to hate the most. Haha, <laughs> why am I thinking too much about this they had nothing to do with me. Queen Maeve laughed at herself, tidied her makeup, and walked in perfect posture. Billy brought Huey to a secret base with an inconspicuous but tightly closed iron door. The gatekeeper reluctantly opened the door to let Billy and Huey in after a threat from Billy. Who would have thought that behind the inconspicuous iron door was a magnificent nightclub with a pool of wine and an endless banquet Huey discovered that the place was a party spot for superhumans. Here, the high and mighty superheroes took off their disguises, revealing their true faces. Billy told Huey that this nightclub could satisfy superheroes' nasty hobbies, away from paparazzi's prying eyes. Almost all the male members of the 7S team had been here before, and this place was filled with all kinds of unsightly things. Moreover, there were many faces that Huey was very familiar with. They were all superheroes that often appeared on TV. Huey recognized a man that's lazily going around in the lobby as the rubber man, Ezekiel. He specialized in preaching all over the country, claiming that the superhumans with natural superpowers were children chosen by God, encouraging more people with superpowers to join Vought International. Who would have thought that the man who had maintained a perfect image to the world would actually do something so unsightly here? Billy and Huey didn't he stay in the lounge for long. They went straight to a room. In the room, Billy ordered the person who opened the door for them to retrieve a surveillance video. The content of this surveillance video completely made Huey angry. The video showed a train in a private room, recounting the event that involved Huey's girlfriend, Robin, he burst into laughter as he finished the story as if it was a joke. A train felt no remorse at all, as if killing Robin was as ordinary as hitting a flying bug on a highway. After watching the video, Billy took out a stack of police records, proving that Robin did not rob the bank on the day she was killed. A train publicly lied, he must be hiding something. And where did he go afterward what was in his bag I already have a plan to deal with this. All you have to do is to accept the compensation from Vought and ask a train to personally apologize to you. Then, use the opportunity to drop a wiretap in their headquarter, the Seven Towers. Can you do it? Billy explained his plan to Huey while looking straight into Huey's eyes, waiting for an answer. I. Chapter 83, The Return of the Thieving Hand Ultimately, Huey refused to agree with Billy's plan. His cowardice trumped over him affecting his decision. Billy couldn't he help it? He already knew that Huey was weak-willed, but he didn't he expect that even the video of a train insulting Robin wasn't he enough to incite Huey into action. Billy was definitely looking down on Huey now. At the same time, the vice president of Vought, Madeline, was negotiating a deal with a politician. Madeline suggested sending a superhero named Nubian Prince to stay in the politician's city. That way, his city would have the protection of a superhero. The politicians basically agreed to Madeline's proposal, but Madeline greedily opened her mouth like a lion and asked for $300 million a year. She was very much like a mother-in-law who demanded a massive dowry. The politician, naturally, refused the demand and bargained for $200 million a year. Madeline rejected this bargain, saying that she wouldn't budge a cent. Oh, but I think you will. That is unless you want the matter of Compound V to be exposed. The politician looked at Madeline with a playful expression, hinting at a secret. What is Compound V? Madeline was obviously shocked that this person would know about that matter, but as expected of the high echelon of Vought, her iron will concealed her panic. She instead shot a question with feigned curiosity. It can completely destroy the reputation of your superheroes. 
I don't think you want it to be exposed. People need superheroes, and that includes our city, but everything has a price, and yours was too high. I'm sorry, I have no idea what is this compound V that you're talking about. If you need a superhero in your city, I will accept no less than $300 million. Madeline did not relent, as if she really did not know about this matter. Is that so let us stop here for today. I will be leaving tomorrow night, so I hope I can receive good news from you before then. The politician calmly got up and readily left Madeline. Madeline was left alone on the sofa, sitting silently. The expression on her face constantly changed as she was deep in thought. Outside the conference room, a figure wearing tight clothes was staring at a painting, also lost in thought. A day passed quickly, and the morning sun peaked again from the horizon. People began to stir and fill the streets, rushing to their job in a hurry. They couldn't be late. At this time, Li Yu walked to the headquarters of the Seven at a leisurely pace. This world was really wonderful. He had become an official superhero just like that, though he still had to clock in and report to the headquarters like a regular employee before he could roam freely. Today was also the first time that Li Yu saw all the members of the Seven. Of course, he was now also a member of the Seven. Nobody stopped him at the entrance to the headquarters. All the staff already knew Li Yu, he was the newest member of the Seven. The staff inevitably threw glances at Li Yu. Some of the young office ladies even gave him coquettish looks. Li Yu ignored all this and took the elevator to the Seven meeting room, the designated gathering place for the Seven. Li Yu had already been there yesterday, so he already knew where to go. He arrived at the destination in no time. After Li Yu entered, he discovered that the other six members of the Seven had already arrived. He was the last to arrive. Li Yu's appearance attracted everyone's attention. The pressure in their gazes was beyond something any ordinary person could withstand. Li Yu was not an ordinary person, so he naturally defied the gazes of these people and continued to walk in with steady steps. Among the six people, a figure wearing a blue skin tight suit and a red and white striped cloak was facing the window, with his back facing Li Yu. Everyone, look. Our new partner is here. Let us welcome him with a round of applause. The man turned around and revealed a bright smile on his face. He spoke to the others while greeting Li Yu. His smile was obviously very fake to Li Yu. Homelander, I can finally meet you. I have always been your fan, so I am really happy to see you today. Can you give me an autograph? Li Yu returned that fake smile with one of his own, even more brilliant than the man in front of him. He embodied the image of a brainless fan that just met his idol. This person was the leader of the Seven, Vought International S Trump Card Superhero, Homelander. Homelander was the combination of Captain America and Superman. He had Superman's power and led the people through respect like Captain America. However, this was just his act in front of outsiders. The real him was unimaginably different. Homelander walked to Li Yu and stretched out his right hand, ready to shake Li Yu's hand. Li Yu hesitated for a moment, but he couldn't miss such a good opportunity. He directly shook Homelander's hand. Li Yu was a little surprised that Homelander's grip didn't hurt him. He thought for sure that Homelander would show off his strength with the handshake, like in the novel that Li Yu read in the past. Li Yu didn't expect that Homelander would just shake his hand normally. But this was a great opportunity. Li Yu had been thinking about how to touch Homelander inconspicuously, but this was the right chance. Li Yu's and Homelander's body seemed to flicker momentarily. It was too short to notice even by Homelander himself. Homelander only detected that Li Yu felt a little surprised, happy, and then fell into a daze after shaking his hand. Li Yu Li Yu what happened to you? Homelander quickly released his hand and asked Li Yu while shaking Li Yu's shoulder. Cough cough, I'm sorry, I'm just a little too excited to see my idol. I'll go to the bathroom to calm down first. Li Yu immediately rushed into the bathroom, leaving the seven to look at his back in surprise. Of course, Li Yu was not in a daze due to his excitement to see Homelander. Li Yu was immediately pulled into his spiritual sky after using his superpower on Homelander. He watched helplessly as the blue energy in the middle formed a hand that grabbed onto the third star. But it was different this time. The hand didn't easily retract from the third star but instead was locked for a while before he could pull it. Li Yu then felt something strange appearing in his body. 
Chapter 84, The Blue Hand Was Broken Li Yu quickly went to the bathroom and locked the door to prevent any disturbance. His reason for joining the Seven was to get close to Homelander. He wanted to see whether the hand that had copied Darwin's ability would work on Homelander. When Li Yu returned to Marvel's world the last time, he had tested the hand once on Tony, but he didn't feel anything different. He didn't become smarter or more focused. Li Yu was a little depressed. Was it because Tony did not have superpowers he then tested it again on Thor, but there was still no change. This made Li Yu a little afraid. Was his blue hand broken was there a place to repair it hey? Li Yu went to this world with that doubt in mind. He was ready to test it again, but he couldn't he just test it on anyone. Homelander was the best choice for this. Homelander was much weaker than Superman, but he was already plenty powerful. Moreover, unlike Superman's vulnerability to kryptonite, Homelander didn't he have any obvious weakness. Even if Liu couldn't he use the blue hand, he could still use his evolution ability to copy Homelander, although it would be a bit slow. Liu carefully inspected the changes in his body. He felt like all the cells in his body had been activated, continuously splitting and recombining endlessly. Liu felt that his body was constantly growing stronger, and his strength was rising at a rapid speed. He had a feeling that a casual punch from him could blow up the building he was in. Of course, this was only an illusion born from his recently gained strength. After a few minutes, Liu felt that the growth of his body and strength had slowed down. He could not accurately gauge how much he had grown, but he could feel for certain that his cells had been energized with an immense amount of power, allowing him to move as he pleased. When Li Yu tried to fully review the changes in his body, he discovered that his body hadn't he stopped changing. Li Yu suddenly felt a sharp pain in the nerves around his eyes. He subconsciously covered his eyes with his hands. However, the pain left as quickly as it came. In almost an instant, Li Yu's eyes could no longer feel the pain. When Li Yu opened his eyes again, he found that he was seeing a very different world than he had seen before. He could see the flow of the air and the subtle lines on his palm. His eyes became like a microscope. When Li Yu concentrated, he found that he could even see through the door in front of him to the bathroom outside. Li Yu focused his attention and looked through the wall of the bathroom. Li Yu could clearly see the members of the seven in the conference room. This is X-ray vision. Li Yu was surprised. He had so easily gained the ability that many other men could only dream of. But it should not be as simple as seeing through things. Li Yu thought about Homelander's other abilities and became even more excited to test them out. Li Yu focused his attention on his eyes again. This time, the energy contained in his cells slowly gathered towards his eyes. Li Yu felt that the surroundings of his eyes suddenly became a little hot. If someone saw Li Yu right now, they would find that Li Yu's eyes were glowing with a faint red light that was getting brighter and brighter. It was a mysterious glow that made people avert their eyes. When the energy gathered in Li Yu's eyes peaked, Li Yu felt that he couldn't suppress that energy anymore. Such a huge amount of energy must have been released, but then Li Yu remembered that he was still in the bathroom now. If he made too much ruckus, he would definitely be discovered. Thinking quickly, Li Yu put his hands in front of his eyes, changing their material into silver-white metal. Li Yu released the energy in his eyes. Two deep red beams shot out from his eyes into his adamantium hands. He could feel the beam's tremendous power on his hands. The red beams of light lasted for a few seconds before disappearing. The crimson glow in Li Yu's eyes gradually faded, returning to their normal appearance. Li Yu found that his adamantium hand was glowing slightly. It was due to the immense temperature of the beam. One could only imagine the power of that red beam. Li Yu, ah, I burnt myself. Li Yu felt that his current self was still far from reaching Homelander's level. But the changes in his body still hadn't he stopped. Li Yu finally came out of the bathroom after more than 10 minutes. When he returned to the conference room, he found that Starlight had arrived. As a substitute, Starlight had no seat in the room, but she came to greet Li Yu. For some reason, Starlight had returned to her former cheery and optimistic appearance. She left shortly after greeting Li Yu. For the first time, Li Yu joined the meeting of the Seven as a member of the team. However, no one was discussing how to save the world, how to ensure the safety of the people, or how to reduce the crime rate of the city. Instead, 
they were discussing combating piracy and securing their income. Due to the rampant piracy of their movies, their income had been greatly reduced. They were also discussing the kind of commercial advertisement that was the most profitable, the most attractive TV shows. Lee Yu didn't he say a word during the meeting. He didn't he know how to join their conversation, because Lee Yu knew nothing about this kind of thing. But Lee Yu wasn't he just sitting idly either. He unleashed his spiritual sixth sense at full power to carefully observe Homelander. Lee Yu had started small in the beginning, just probed a little here and there, afraid of being discovered. However, for some reason, Homelander didn't he seem to have detected Lee Yu's spiritual sixth sense. Was it true that Superman's magic resistance was negative? When he found that Homelander couldn't he detect his spiritual probes, Lee Yu decided to be bold and carefully investigated Homelander at full strength. He also put his evolution ability in overdrive, continuously evolving himself. Lee Yu found that he had all of Homelander's abilities. Super body, super strength, X-ray vision, heat vision. He even had the ability to fly. Lee Yu should be happy, but then he discovered something else. He didn't he know if there was a problem with the blue hand or if it was just the way it was supposed to work, but the power he copied was only about one-tenth of Homelander's power. Although, even that one-tenth was already enough to look down on most of the superheroes in the world. But if he was facing Homelander, it would be like a child fighting an adult. Then again, he could always run. Thus, Li Yu decided to stay on the seven. It would be best if he could stay beside Homelander and evolve himself continuously. All right, let us stop that talk here. We can't let the newcomer think we never talk about anything other than money. Let us continue it later and call it a day. Homelander announced the end of the meeting while smiling at Li Yu, who hadn't he said a word since the meeting started. Li Yu stood up and walked out of the meeting room. He had something to discuss with Madeline. Chapter 85, The Disobedient Translucent It didn't he take long for Li Yu to reach Madeline's office. He didn't he hesitate to knock on the door. Knock knock. Come in. A voice replied to his knocks. Li Yu pushed the door open and entered the room, remembering to close the door afterward. Thunderclap, it's you. Come, come, and sit. Why are you looking for me? Madeline looked up and recognized Li Yu. A gentle expression instantly appeared on her face. According to Vought International Policy and accounting for his superpower, Li Yu's superhero nickname was Thunderclap. Li Yu had suggested the nickname God of Thunder, but it was rejected. Their reasoning was that the moniker God would create a distance between him and the people. It wasn't he conducive for Li Yu's influencer activities. Therefore, Madeline decided on Thunderclap as Li Yu's codename, which retained a domineering sense yet was friendly. Li Yu didn't he refute anything that Madeline said. His nickname didn't he really matter to him anyway. Miss Madeline, I have come to ask you for a favor. Li Yu said directly after sitting opposite Madeline's table. Oh you have just joined the seven. Do you not like it? Madeline asked, perplexed. She clearly valued Li Yu highly, so she spoke very gently to him. Miss Madeline, it is true that I have just joined the seven, which means I don't have much fame right now. Coupled with my identity, I will definitely be discriminated against by some people. Thus, I have a proposal. Can you put Homelander and me to act together with Homelander's popularity, my own fame would increase very quickly, which means I could bring profit to the company as soon as possible. On top of that, if I act with Homelander, even people who would discriminate against me wouldn't he dare do it openly. This would, in turn, help company image. Li Yu said. Li Yu quietly waited for Madeline's response after he finished speaking. Everything Li Yu said was, of course, purely to fool Madeline. Who cares about his popularity or the company's profit it was all excuses to get close to Homelander. If Li Yu could work alongside Homelander, he could continuously refine his evolution. This was Li Yu's true goal, obtaining power. Well, I suppose your proposal makes sense. How about this today, go on with the plan to shoot your promotional video. I'll talk to Homelander tomorrow. I can let you work together with him in public, with him as the leader and you as the sidekick. But what about Queen Maeve's arrangement? Madeline basically agreed to Li Yu's request after she thought about it for a while, 
but then she was embarrassed to admit that she didn't know how to fit Queen Maeve into the team's arrangement. I think it is better to get Queen Maeve and Starlight to act together. They are both female superheroes, so they would be popular with male fans, and we can also use it to create a tagline, women could also become superheroes that save the world. Lee Yu quickly made a proposal to prevent Madeline's dilemma from ruining his plan. Oh that plan sounds good. Then it's settled. By the way, after today's shoot is finished, we'll send them to major TV stations. Your tagline would be the one you said yesterday, with great power comes great responsibility. What do you think? Madeline seemed to value Lee Yu's opinion highly. She even talked to Lee Yu about his promotional plan. Lee Yu was a little surprised. Madeline was a very strong character in the show. She was one of the few people who could control the invincible homelander like a puppet in her hand, though he overturned the arrangement in the end. Madeline's methods are terrifyingly effective. But now, she asked for Lee Yu's opinion. Lee Yu felt that it might be better not to show his hands too much. It would be bad if she started being suspicious of him. I will abide by the vice president's arrangements. Li Yu solemnly replied. All right, that s that. You can go and film your promotional video now. If you have any problems, you can go directly to me. Since Li Yu agreed to her plan, Madeline saw no benefit in holding him any longer. Li Yu also achieved his goal, so he had nothing to do there either. Heh, you had only joined the seven, but you already knew how to suck up to your superior. Guarantee you quite good. Madeline said to herself as she looked at Lee U.S. back. She believed Lee U.S. claimed to boost his popularity through Homelander. Huey arrived at the Seven headquarters around that same time. He finally chose to go along with Billy's plan. His newfound confidence was sparked by the chance encounter he had with a girl whose mood was almost as bad as his. After comforting and encouraging each other, the two regained their fighting spirit and bravery to face the future. Huey made up his mind to call Billy and agree to his plan. The cowardly Huey finally mustered up the courage to seek justice for his girlfriend. Billy was stunned for a while before agreeing to meet up with Huey. Billy gave Huey a small listening device after their meeting. It was very simple to use, and due to its small size, it could be hidden inside Huey's phone and safely brought in. Huey then called the Vought International Lawyer, saying that he agreed to sign the confidentiality agreement. He didn't even need the compensation as long as A-Train could apologize to him personally. The lawyer on the other side agreed without thinking. Huey arrived at the Seven building. It was a little nerve-wracking, but Huey entered safely into the building. Billy's wiretap was safely stored in Huey's phone, Huey only needed the opportunity to put it in the Seven's office. But Huey's calm nerve was agitated by anger all over again when he saw A-Train. He recalled A-Train's bloody visage every time he saw the superhero's face. After taking a few deep breaths and calming himself down, he shook hands with A-Train, signifying his acceptance of the apology. A-Train didn't he stay for long. He left basically right after shaking Huey's hand. Before signing the agreement, Huey made an excuse to go to the bathroom and prepared to plant the wiretap. However, because it was his first time doing this kind of thing, he was too nervous and dropped the bug in the bathroom door, but he ultimately succeeded in planting the bug in the conference room. Huey had no way of knowing that a naked figure suddenly appeared in the bathroom stall he was just in. If Li Yu was here, he would definitely be speechless. I had wanted to change your tragic fate, but you insisted on sending yourself to me. Chapter 86, Late Night How is it going? It was night time when Huey saw Billy again. Billy was waiting for him in a car. It should be going well. I put the thing you gave me under their conference room desk. Huey replied after taking a few deep breaths and entering the car. He was still nervous. Well done, Huey. Billy praised Huey. This was the first time he recognized Huey. I don't have to do anything else, right your FBI guys can just get the evidence of their crimes and bring them to justice my girlfriend would turn out as innocent, right? Huey had calmed down. All the things he did was for his girlfriend. And he still thought that Billy was working for the FBI. Yeah, you don't have to do anything else. Don't worry about it and leave it to me. Billy would do anything to achieve his goal. Deceiving a random civilian was nothing new to him. 
Justice for Huey's girlfriend that's just an excuse he used to fool Huey. He just needed Huey to plant the wiretap in the 7S office. Billy's ultimate goal was to uncover evidence of the 7S crime and bring it to the public. He wanted to bring down the 7 and Vought International that he hated so much. Of course, Billy had his own reason to resent the 7 and Vought International. His wife had disappeared a few years ago, and he had no idea whether she was even still alive. The only thing he knew was that her disappearance was related to the leader of the Seven, Homelander. Everything Billy did was to find out the truth about his wife's disappearance. Billy dropped Huey at Huey's workplace before driving away. They both thought that this would be the last time they met each other. However, Madeline had thought and considered for a whole day in her office, before finally reaching a decision. She picked up the phone and dialed a number. Hello, Ms. Madeline. Do you have good news for me? A voice leisurely greeted through the phone. It was the politician who negotiated with Madeline last night. Sir, through the discussion of our higher UPS, we have concluded that your city has an urgent need for a superhero. Thus, citing humanitarian concerns, we have agreed to lower the price up to 230 million. Would you consider this acceptable Madeline said calmly after taking a deep breath. It was clearly a compromise from Madeline. There was no other way. If the existence of Compound V was exposed to the public, it would cause an immeasurable blow to Vought International. 230 million glad to hear you finally speaking reason. I hope that we would continue our cooperation. The politician readily agreed to this price. It was already unthinkable that Vought International would agree to such a massive concession. He didn't he want to push his luck too much. All right, then we have reached an agreement. I wish you a smooth flight tonight. Madeline's voice was thick with sarcasm, but the politician on the phone clearly didn't he care, he probably thought that Madeline was actually wishing him good luck. There was no way his private plane flight would have any turbulence. He hung up after saying goodbye. A figure outside the office looked at a portrait on the wall with a thoughtful expression. Today was indescribable for Li Yu. He finally experienced the life of those internet celebrities he saw in his previous life, a full day spent in front of the camera, filming promotional videos. Unfortunately, Li Yu didn't he have any experience in front of the camera. He was able to act natural when the camera was off, but as soon as the camera turned on, his thick skin disappeared. But Li Yu finally finished the day-long torment. Li Yu felt that this kind of thing was more tiring than being an actual superhero. He was just exchanging physical fatigue for a mental one. This was the first time Li Yu had to face so many cameras. Li Yu returned to his home, exhausted, but then he recalled that he would begin to be dispatched with Homelander tomorrow. His motivation instantly returned when he thought about the possible growth in his strength. He had secretly checked his current power level in a secluded corner. Despite being only one-tenth of Homelander's strength, Li Yu was already shocked beyond belief. He had attained immeasurable physical strength. He could lift any object that he encountered. Even an adamantium knife formed from his right hand can't pierce his regular skin. He also tested his X-ray vision. Just like the setting in the show, Li Yu could see through any and all objects, including heavy metals and even lead. He hadn't he found any zinc, so he could verify if his X-ray vision shared the same weakness against zinc as Homelander S. The heat vision was where Li Yu felt the greatest gap between him and Homelander. Even with full strength, the U.S. version was very narrow, although it still reached a high temperature. Moreover, he needed to focus his power for a few seconds before he could fire the thermal ray, unlike Homelander that could kill anyone with a glare. Li Yu also finally obtained the iconic flight ability. He had no idea what principle worked to allow for his flight, but he was able to rise and float a few meters in the air. He felt that he had enough strength to easily break the sound barrier and reach several times the speed of sound. Unfortunately, he didn't he have the chance to experiment because he had a positioning chip specially made by Vought International. This was the precaution to protect and monitor superheroes under Vought. Li Yu couldn't he remove the chip while he wanted to stay within Vought, so his dream of a free flight would have to wait for some time. But just waiting for a bit is trivial compared to the power he could obtain by being near Homelander. A private plane was flying quickly but steadily through the night sky, carrying the politician who had negotiated the superhero assignment with Madeline, along with him was a child, a little boy only a few years old. 
the little boy's biggest hobby was to geek out about the superheroes under Vought International, and among them, his favorite was the 7S Captain, Homelander. Bored, the little boy looked around the plane and outside the window. He then noticed a vague figure outside the window, and he immediately cried out. Dad, look. What is that outside? Honey, what's wrong? The politician asked with concern to his spoiled son. Dad, that looks like Homelander. Is he here to see us off? The little boy asked innocently. His father once said that he was very close to the superheroes, and even brought signed photographs for him. What is he doing here? The politician hurried to the window in shock. He saw a figure flying at the same speed as the plane. The figure noticed his gaze and turned their head, it really was Homelander. The politician immediately felt a bad omen, but it was too late. Homelander's eyes shone with red light and shot two beams of searing heat right at him. Boom. The plane exploded out of the sky, leaving only a dark figure with glowing scarlet eyes in the sky. The figure smiled. Chapter 87, Translucent was beaten by electrotherapy. Huey's night shift was just beginning when the door to the shop suddenly opened, despite there being nobody to open it. Is it the wind impossible? No matter how strong the wind is, it can't open this kind of door. Huey was obviously surprised. Just as he tried to see what was going on, an object suddenly flew above the counter. Huey had a bad feeling about this. The hell is this do you really think we can't find this thing who sent you, huh? The wiretap that Huey had planted in the 7S office suddenly appeared in front of him, floating in the air. It was accompanied by an angry voice. Huey immediately understood. His work was discovered, and the voice in front of him must be Translucent, who was sent to deal with him. Huey, coward as he was, didn't he dare to fight back. It wasn't he like he could, either, a normal human like Huey could never contend with the soup. Translucent grabbed Huey by the collar, pulled him off the counter, and slammed him to the ground. Who was that guy in the car what's his name where did he live did he tell you to do this tell me everything if you don't wanna die. Translucent interrogated Huey loudly. He's just a driver, I don't know him. Please, don't kill me. Huey was scared out of his mind, but despite everything, he decided to hide Billy's identity. Could be he fooled me. Do you think I'm an idiot why did you plant the bug huh tell me. Translucent pulled a monitor screen off the wall and raised it above Huey, ready to slam it on him. I beg you, please, don't kill me. I really don't know who he is. Huey kept begging for mercy, but unfortunately, Translucent had no intention to stop. Bang. Right before Translucent could hit Huey with the monitor, a car crashed through the store and knocked Translucent away from Huey. Haha, <laughs> so it's the scaredy pervert Translucent. It was Billy who had decided to crash his car into the store to save Huey from Translucent. He walked out of the car door. Huey, you should hurry up and leave. Billy reminded Huey to run before approaching Translucent, who was lying on the ground. As expected of a superhero, Translucent wasn't he injured even after being hit by the car. He immediately got up and wrestled with Billy. Panicked, Huey hurriedly stood up and was about to leave. However, when he looked back one last time, he realized that Billy the normal human was no match for Translucent. Billy couldn't he even see Translucent. He was beaten bloody in just a few moments. There was no point for Huey to run. Fortunately, Billy was smart. He spat out the blood in his mouth towards the invisible Translucent, revealing Translucent's rough position. Billy could finally fight back with his decent martial arts. However, the gap between a superhuman and an ordinary person was still too huge. Even if Billy's skill was good, his fists still couldn't he damage Translucent's diamond hard skin. Billy's trick didn't he give him much edge. Huey was still petrified while watching the fight. He wanted to break out of his weak character and help Billy against Translucent. Huey sneaked behind Translucent, who had beaten Billy to the ground. Just like the cliché villain that he was, Translucent's overconfidence led him to begin talking again. Instead of finishing Billy off, he loudly interrogated Billy. Huey had already thought of a way to defeat Translucent from a TV interview he watched a while back. In that interview, Translucent explained that his power wasn't he true invisibility. Instead, 
the carbon atoms in his skin transformed into a special metamaterial that distorted the light around him, making him effectively invisible. Huey thought that while translucent S diamond hard skin was invincible to conventional elements, it was still composed of carbon, which had a glaring weakness against electricity. Huey quickly picked up a cable that had been torn during the fight. He was ready to apply the patented Yang Yang's in electroconvulsive therapy. But the wire was not long enough to reach translucent and awkwardly snagged in his hand. Fortunately, Billy saw what Huey was trying to do. Still lying on the ground, he kicked at translucent. Translucent reflexively stepped back, right into the cable in Huey's hand. Arg! The last sound he made was tragically similar to a pig being slaughtered. Help me get him to the car. We have to deal with his body quickly if we don't want the other members of the Seven to find us. Billy finally broke the silence, asking Huey for help. Do we have to can't you just call your FBI friends you saw it, he attacked us first. It was self-defense. Huey's cowardly nature already returned. He had just killed the superhero Translucent. Fortunately, there was an FBI agent at the scene who could testify for him. It was self-defense. Sorry, I lied to you. I stopped working for the FBI a long time ago. So if someone else saw this, we'd become the murderers who killed a superhero. Billy's calm words ignited an explosion of emotions in Huey's heart. Fuck, what did you say Aaron to you with the FBI you? I, we're fucked. Huey yelled at Billy. He was at a loss for words, his blood racing a thousand miles an hour. So I'm just a murderer I murdered a famous superhero. Yes, but no one knows that yet. Nobody will find out if we destroy his corpse. Now stop talking nonsense, you already know what would happen if we're discovered. Billy's voice was still calm. He was obviously experienced, as he had no hint of panic on his face. Huey could only follow Billy's plan helplessly. He had unknowingly boarded a pirate ship, with no way to get off. Huey and Billy stashed translucent S corpse in the back trunk of the car, ready for disposal. However, halfway through their journey, a burst of angry curses and a crashing sound came rowdily from that same trunk. Shit, he wasn't he dead. Chapter 88, Dispatched with Homelander Despite everything that have happened, the night passed quickly as usual. The morning sun rose and illuminated the earth, heralding a new day. In Madeline's office. Vice President, Translucent has gone dark for more than 10 hours. I couldn't track his location through his GPS chip. A female assistant reported to Madeline. The news of Translucent's disappearance finally reached Vought International. Don't worry about him. He is a soup, and his skin is as hard as a diamond. Nobody could even scratch him he is probably drinking somewhere. Madeline waved the matter away. There was a precedent of Translucent disappearing to drink, so she didn't think that this would be any different. But, what should we do about his scheduled activities he is supposed to visit a cancer patient today? We be sent a train as a substitute for now, but what about the dispatch with Deep tonight? The female assistant similarly brushed the disappearance off and instead focused on the events that Translucent was supposed to attend. How about we let Queen Maeve and Starlight attend tonight's event with him we could use the footage to further the independent, free-thinking women angle? Madeline replied after thinking for a moment. We will do as you instructed, Vice President. The female assistant prepared to leave and arrange the change in the schedule. Wait. Call Homelander to my office, and tell Thunderclap to come here in ten minutes, Madeline ordered to the departing assistant. Yes, Vice President. The female assistant finally left. The door to Madeline's office opened again less than a minute later. Homelander entered through it. Madeline was holding a bottle of white liquid in her hand. She had just given birth to a baby not long ago, so it was probably for her baby. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were. Homelander casually apologized and covered his eyes. It doesn't matter, I just gave birth to a baby, you know. Madeline tidied up her clothes in front of Homelander without a care in the world. I heard the Major that we just signed a deal with last night had an accident and fell into the sea on his way back. There was no survivor. Madeline casually dropped the bombastic news while straightening her clothes. Really that s unfortunate news. May God bless them. Though, it's not like I believe in God. 
Homelander's surprised act looked genuine. Deep found the wreckage of the plane after searching almost all night long. He told me something interesting, there were obvious burn marks on the wreckage as if it had been hit by two high temperature beams. Moreover, the distance between the two beams was exactly the distance between human eyes. Of course, Deep had told no one other than me. Madeline smiled inexplicably as if it was the most obvious statement in the world. All right, I confess. But I only did it because I heard him threatening you. How did he know about Compound V anyway? Homelander looked like a child whose misbehavior was discovered. Well, let us leave it at that. Our primary goal is to get those government officials to approve the use of soup in the Ministry of Defense. This is a crucial time, so don't cause any more trouble. Madeline said gently to Homelander. Madeline was a master in this field. She knew that Homelander had been listening to her conversation, and deliberately wished the politician a smooth flight to let Homelander know about it. She knew that Homelander would act upon that information. She would then reveal that she had known about Homelander's unauthorized actions while acting as a generous superior that would forgive him. In this way, she could get Homelander to do her bidding and silence those who knew about Compound V while keeping him in her debt at the same time. You don't have to worry. I have my own plan to get into the Ministry of Defense. Homelander replied with a cryptic answer. All right, let us leave it at that. I need your favor. Remember Thunderclap, the newest member of your team I have decided to dispatch you and him together, so he could build his fan base as soon as possible. Madeline didn't press Homelander about his answer and instead switched the topic to Liu. Am I allowed to refuse? Knock knock. Someone was knocking on Madeline's door a few minutes later. Come in. Vice President, are you looking for me? Liu entered the room. He immediately knew what was up when he saw Homelander, his goal had been achieved. This is Homelander, but you should know that already. I called you here because I have arranged for you two to be in a unit. In the future, you two would be dispatched together. Thunderclap, you should listen to Homelander's command. Do you understand Madeline said to Liu. Yes, my am Vice President, I understand, Liu replied calmly, suppressing the excitement in his heart. All right, you guys can go back to your work. Liu finally got what he wanted. He could be close to Homelander at all times, without being suspicious. Liu would overcharge his spiritual senses when he was around Homelander, focusing all his attention on Homelander and slowly evolving his body. Liu felt excited from the electrifying feelings in his cells. Liu found that Homelander had a lot of idle time. The leader of the Seven wandered around the company when he had nothing to do. But the free time didn't he last forever. A few hours later, they received a call for support from the police. Homelander immediately carried Liu and flew out of the building after receiving the news, rushing close to ten times the speed of sound. Liu had no way of knowing this, but Homelander rarely flew at such high speed. He specifically rushed because he brought Liu along. Liu, who was carried like a chicken, felt that Homelander was trying to show off and humble Liu down. They arrived at the crime scene in just a few dozen seconds, greeted by the endless sound of gunfire. Look, it's Homelander. He is so cool. Thank you for your hard work. Leave the rest to us. You are the real heroes. Homelander finally slowed down and landed on the ground, greeting the police officers with a smile. The people around them cheered at him. Liu felt a burst of nausea. He was understandably a little dizzy. This was the first time he had flown nearly ten times the speed of sound. On top of that, he was being carried by someone, instead of inside a plane. It was honestly uncomfortable. And of course, that was exactly Homelander's goal. Chapter 89, The Cruel Homelander Hey who is that with Homelander shouldn't he be with Queen Maeve? It seems that that s thunderclap, the 7s newbie. Two of the spectators whispered to each other while pointing at Liu, who stood next to Homelander. That s the thunderclap the one that got mocked during his own announcement but turned the audience around he doesn't he look like much. He couldn't he even stand being carried by Homelander. Such a disgusting guy. If it was me in Homelander's arms, I would definitely be excited to death. You what a joke. I don't think you'll be any better than Thunderclap. Hell, I bet you'd just pee your pants immediately. You're the one who peed your pants. No, 
You. The two young men suddenly began to spit at each other. If not for the large crowd of people around them and the police maintaining order, they would have already started fighting. Stand up straight and smile at the crowd. You're giving us a bad name. Homelander whispered to Li Yu, conveniently forgetting that he was the one that deliberately made Li Yu like this. I got it. Li Yu struggled to stand up and forced a smile on his face, waving at the crowd. Li Yu didn't he actually suffer that much. It was simply his first time flying at high speed, so he felt little nausea that quickly dissipated after he landed. But Li Yu couldn't he show that he was almost unaffected by Homelander's little stunt, he didn't he want Homelander to suspect him. Therefore, Li Yu kept his pained act up. His forced smile was uglier than a crying face. It seems like Homelander hadn't he caught up to Li Yu's acts. He waved to the spectators and walked brazenly in the middle of the crossfire between the police and the criminals. Li Yu followed behind him. Two figures leisurely strolled one after another in the rain of bullets, as if they were just chopping. They made no efforts to avoid the bullets, the bullets that hit them simply made a ding sound, unable to harm them. Homelander obviously had no need to fear the bullets. Li Yu's own body had been bulletproof even before coming to this world, so with one-tenth of Homelander's ability added to it, he might just be able to shrug off a missile. Li Yu estimated that only a direct hit from a nuclear bomb would be able to fatally injure him. That, and the person walking in front of him. Against that monster, he had no choice other than to escape. Oh thank God, Homelander, you're finally here. Thank you for coming, you truly are the guardian of the city. Someone who seems to be the commander of the police excitedly greeted Homelander and Li Yu. You are welcome, sir. You stood bravely to protect the people, I think you are more deserving to be called heroes. Li Yu couldn't he help but be impressed by Homelander's perfect poker face when he said such a blatant lie. The thoughts in his heart and the expression on his face were totally different. Can you brief us on the situation, sir? There should be five criminals, all armed with considerable firepower. We can't rush in. Leave it to us. Can you tell us their specific location? Homelander did not care about how many people there were and what weapons they were carrying. He just wanted to solve the problem as soon as possible so that he could return to spying on Madeline. They are on the 31st floor. The police officer didn't he have the time to finish his sentence, Homelander already picked up Li Yu and soared into the sky. They flew a hundred meters high before smashing through the window and entering the building. I'll leave those people to you. Homelander ordered Li Yu after bringing them into the building. No problem, leave it to me. Li Yu didn't he know why Homelander left it to him when Homelander could be easily finished everything, but he couldn't he refuse this order. Li Yu transformed into the God of Thunder estate, summoning silvery arcs around his body. He wasted no time on stealth and directly entered the criminal's hideout. As expected, there were five criminals in the room, all armed with guns. They instantly aimed their weapons at Li Yu when he entered. You would do well to put your weapons down if you still want to see the sun rise tomorrow. Li Yu threatened them, walking slowly in his lightning clad form. We surrender, don't kill us. The criminals easily surrendered when they saw that Li Yu was a superhero. They knew that the metal boomstick in their hand wouldn't even scratch the soups. They threw down their guns and raised their hands in surrender. Just as Li Yu was about to happily let the criminal surrender and hand them to the police, his instinct suddenly told him to escape with his teleportation power. Li Yu forcibly suppressed this instinct when he realized that the threat from behind him wasn't he aimed at him. Two scarlet beams of light shot past Li Yu's ear. Li Yu could clearly feel their terrifying temperature. He could even feel his hair being burned by the radiant heat, though he didn't he even know if it was just his imagination. With a deadly sweep of the scarlet beam, all five criminals in front of Li Yu were exterminated, leaving only splatters of blood. They died without any corpses. This was the first time Li Yu had seen such a cruel scene with his own eyes. No need to waste words with these kinds. Just kill them right away. Homelander's voice came behind Li Yu, prompting him to turn his head. A red glow still remained in Homelander's eyes, which quickly faded away. But, they already. They ignored our warning and fired at us, leaving us no choice but to fight back and accidentally kill them with our overwhelming power. Homelander spoke while walking past Li Yu to the mangled remains of the criminals. 
he picked up one of the guns and fired it at Li Yu. Bang bang bang. A hail of bullets hit Li Yu, but he didn't even feel any of them. The gun couldn't harm him, but Homelander's actions sent a chill in his heart. Watching a TV show is one thing, witnessing the cruelty in real life is another. Only now could Li Yu truly understand the extent of Homelander's cruelty and bloodlust. Is it really the right choice to join his side? Homelander definitely shot his laser beam as close as possible to Li Yu. It was clearly a warning, if he ever want to kill Li Yu, it would be effortless. Li Yu began to doubt his decision. Back to Billy and Huey, who had just discovered that Translucent in their car trunk was still alive. Let me off, I want to go home. Huey urged in panic, still holding to the hope that he could return to his peaceful life. Are you sure Translucent already saw our faces? It's easy to imagine what would happen if he managed to go back to the headquarters. Even your family. Forget it. What should we do next? Huey helplessly gave up the idea of running away and listened to Billy's plan. Chapter 90, Li Yu's Harvest in One Day As soon as they met, Huey immediately understood that the person Billy drove them to was probably just like him. He must be even tricked by Billy before, another victim of Billy's scam. Billy introduced the man as Frenchie, a French man with a short stature. He was an all-rounder, proficient in all kinds of firearms, bombs, and other weapons. And Billy had borrowed $40,000 from him. Frenchie couldn't he help but be curious when Billy said that he had brought something worth $80,000. Frenchie agreed to take a look at the thing inside the car trunk. Huey watched helplessly as Frenchie walked straight into another one of Billy tricks. He felt for Frenchie, but he couldn't he say anything. He was just thankful that he wasn't he the only one being tricked. When Frenchie opened the car trunk and saw Translucent, restrained by a taser, he immediately understood that he had just been tricked again. Due to the nature of Translucent's superpower, his tracking chip had to be implanted inside his body for Bot International to be able to track him. By showing Frenchie to him, Billy dragged Frenchie to the hot water. Frenchie had no choice but to comply with Billy's requests. He found a long-abandoned restaurant in the remote reach of Jersey City, installing metal foils in the kitchen refrigerator room to block the tracking chip's signal. He also made an electrified cage to trap Translucent. After getting Translucent all locked up, the two discussed all sorts of methods to kill Translucent. Huey was stunned, he didn't he expect that Billy would actually want to kill Translucent. This directly contradicted Huey's goal. Everything he did was to uphold justice for his innocent girlfriends. He never thought that he would have to go against a superhero. How could he get into the situation Huey never even dared to think about killing superheroes, yet Billy and Frenchie readily went into action to implement their plans. They tried all kinds of methods. First, they cranked up the electricity until it was enough to kill a buffalo. Yet it only managed to stun Translucent, not kill him. They then tried an electric drill, an angle grinder, and an electric saw. All of them were useless. Translucent's skin was extremely hard. Frenchie even tried manufacturing a special bullet from the same material as Translucent's skin, but the bullet couldn't harm Translucent. Instead, it bounced a few times on the wall, before puncturing through the roof of the room, creating a hole in the tin foil that blocked the tracker signal. But they didn't know about this. The three people were discouraged by the lack of results. They had a soup right on their palms, yet they couldn't do anything to him. They began to feel anxious. Vought International would discover Translucent's disappearance soon, and they would eventually find this place. After thinking for a while, Billy suddenly got up and prepared to go out. He needed to find a way to deal with Translucent, and he knew someone who might just know how. It was his old friend, a woman who worked for the CIA. He wanted to get detailed information about soups from her, in the hope that he would find a clue to deal with Translucent. The day passed quickly, and night approached in the blink of an eye. Li Yu stayed in his room, thinking about what to do next. Today's event was a wake-up call for Li Yu. Homelander was a cold-hearted person who wouldn't he think twice about killing. He had no idea how long he would be able to hide the truth about himself, but the moment that his disguise slipped, Homelander would definitely try to kill him. With his current strength, he couldn't he defeat Homelander, so he would only be able to escape. On the other hand, he was still reluctant. 
This was a golden opportunity to greatly increase his strength. He would regret it to the day he die if he missed this chance. After all, only from this day alone, Li Yu could clearly feel the growth of his strength. He had only been able to obtain 10% of Homelander's strength before, but the event today had increased it to over 12%. And that s before combining it with the God of Thunder state and other evolution. An increase of 2% might not seem like much, but it was Homelander's strength. If Homelander could lift 100 tons, then 2% of his strength meant 2 tons. 2 tons was already almost 10 times what an ordinary person could lift. And Homelander's strength was more than just 100 tons. The immense growth in just one day was an irresistible temptation for Li Yu. If possible, Li Yu never wanted to leave Homelander's side ever again. To Li Yu, Homelander was like a human-shaped charger. If he could sustain this growth every day, then it would only take one and a half months for him to possess all of Homelander's strength. Only then could he face Homelander. Ha, why am I thinking about this so much I could leave this place at any time anyway. I just have to be more aware of the dangers around me, I don't think even Homelander could catch up with me even with his speed. Let us just forget about it for now, and continue my cultivation. Dummy, set the alarm for 8 o'clock tomorrow. Li Yu laid his body on the bed after setting Dummy's alarm. A transparent version of him slowly emerged from his body, floating and sitting cross-legged in the air. Specks of blue star-like energy were attracted and gathered by Li Yu's soul. Li Yu had already treated cultivation as sleeping. While Li Yu was immersed in cultivation, the people at Vought International were restless. Translucent had been missing for 24 hours, enough to garner attention from the Vought staff. They realized that this wasn't he just another one of Translucent's drinking trips. Moreover, the positioning chip on Translucent suddenly sent out a weak signal. The technical department at Vought International managed to identify the signal, but they could only give an approximate location, a street in Jersey City. They directly informed the company's vice president, Madeline. Madeline did not think too much about it and directly ordered the search team to carefully investigate that location and report further suspicious discoveries. However, the search team cannot operate openly, out of fear that they would create speculation and panic in the people. Translucent rarely goes out of the public eye for a long period, so his disappearance would inevitably be known. Once Translucent's disappearance become public knowledge, suspicion, and distrust would arise. What good are soups that couldn't even protect themselves the dream of superheroes entering the Ministry of Defense would fizzle into thin air? Madeline couldn't let that happen. Find Translucent as soon as possible, at all costs. Also, announce to the public that Translucent is going on a secret operation that would prevent him to appear in public, Madeline directed. Madeline need to suppress this problem immediately because it was a crucial problem to her goal of entering the Ministry of Defense. There must not be any mistakes. Homelander was currently peeping at Madeline. Li Yu had been sticking close to him for the whole day, so he hadn't been able to eavesdrop on Madeline. He only found the chance after getting rid of Li Yu at night. Starlight encountered Homelander while he was peeping. Fortunately, the plain-clothed Starlight was just a little curious and didn't he suspect that Homelander was peeping. Chapter 91, Finding Translucent Huey and Frenchie narrowly avoided being detected by the search team. Just as they breathed a sigh of relief, a knock on the door jolted them back into high alert. Fortunately, it was Billy, who had returned. But Billy didn't he bring good news with him. He didn't he find any ways to put Translucent down. The three were distraught, not knowing what to do. By sheer coincidence, the program on the TV caught Frenchie's attention. It was about turtles. I know the way. Frenchie yelled, before immediately getting to work. What way? Billy and Huey speechlessly looked at the happy Frenchie. The peaceful night passed quickly, and in the blink of an eye, Another morning arrived. Li Yu once again arrived at the 7S building, and he immediately met Homelander, who seemed to be going somewhere. Thunderclap, you came at the right time. Come with me, we're having a little excursion today. Homelander's eyes lit up when he saw Li Yu. Apparently, he was about to do something that required Li Yu's help. All right? Just say the word. Of course, Li Yu wouldn't he refuse. He would do anything to stay by Homelander. Li Yu followed behind Homelander, 
quietly using his evolution power. After walking for a while, they arrived at the technical department. Ah, Homelander, good morning. What business would you have here? An employee quickly greeted Homelander with a dry smile. Everyone in the technical department immediately straightened their backs and shiver in fear when Homelander entered, afraid that Homelander would nitpick them. In Vought International, the most feared figure was Vice President Madeline, followed by Homelander. Just the sight of either of them would frighten any employees. Have you found Translucent? Homelander ignored the person who greeted him and went directly to a woman that was sitting in front of the computer. Within Vought environment, Homelander shed the polite and fake smile he showed to people outside. His expression was very serious. Uh, Homelander, the search team is working very hard. I believe they would get the result soon. I'm asking you, have you found Translucent? Homelander's serious face deepened. The woman shrank back in fear and stuttered. W. We haven't found him yet. But. He has been missing for 24 hours, and you haven't found him. Forget it, just give me the last location of his tracker. Should I call to confirm? No, no, no. You don't seem to understand that I am Homelander. I can do whatever I want. By the way, what is your name? A smile suddenly appeared on Homelander's face, but to the woman, it looked more like a demon's grin. Her fear intensified. My name, my name is Anika. Ms. Anika, what a nice name. Now, please tell me where you last detected Translucent S Tracker. Please. Homelander walked behind Annie and grabbed her shoulders, staring at her intently. Liu was still watching from the side, he was really afraid that Homelander would shoot his laser beam directly at the woman called Annika. Fortunately, Annika obediently gave Homelander the location. Homelander wasted no word and immediately grabbed Liu to fly out of the building, straight to the target location. This time, Homelander didn't he go at 10 times the speed of sound, just slightly above the speed of sound. But it's still a very fast speed. Billy and the others finally dealt with Translucent after a lot of work. The method they used was extremely vulgar, but it was very effective. They first electrocuted Translucent, then placed a special bomb in his body. It was a remote control bomb. When the remote control was pressed, the bomb would explode. However, because of the gag reflex and the stomach acid, they couldn't put the bomb in through translucent s mouth, but from another indescribable place. Apparently, Frenchie had the idea when he saw the turtle on TV. Both the turtle and translucent had a hard exterior, but their internal organs were as fragile as ordinary people. Therefore, translucent could easily be killed with an explosion from within his body, despite his diamond hard skin. Translucent was immediately stunned the first time that Frenchie described the idea to him. His arrogance melted away. He had no idea how these people thought of such a dirty method. Don't kill me. What do you want to know I'll tell you everything, just don't kill me. Translucent was already afraid of death, to begin with, much less such a cowardly manner of death. He immediately surrendered and offered information. Don't you want to know what happened on the day that a train killed his girlfriend? I don't know what happened either, but Popclaw should know everything. She and a train are a couple. They thought they hide it from anyone, but they can't hide from me, and a train won't hide anything from her. I've told you everything I know. Please, let me go. Popclaw, the Popclaw who can grow bone spikes on her arm, Billy asked curiously. Yes, that s her. You can ask her for the rest. Let me go, I promise I won't tell anyone about you. Faced with life and death, Translucent had abandoned his loyalty and integrity. How could he still have any dignity the current him was just a pitiful worm that could shake his head and tail, begging others to let him go. But Billy obviously didn't he intend to let Translucent go. Billy hated soups to the bone, to the point that he could kill them one by one. Translucent S. plea was destined to fall on deaf ears. They didn't he let Translucent go after getting the intel. They closed the refrigerated room door and discussed how to approach Popclaw and get information. However, their discussion was interrupted by a figure that flew quickly past a nearby surveillance camera. The speed was too high, they couldn't he see Liu who was being carried. All of them were shocked. It was troublesome that Homelander actually came here. 
We need to distract him, he did find us sooner or later. Billy said in a serious tone. How Frenchy asked anxiously. Pittsburgh. Let S blow him up. What that S an expensive base. I spent a lot of money building it. And you're going to blow it up. Put it on my tab. Frenchy was speechless. You still owe me $40,000, and you want to add on that but it concerned his own life and death, so he could only agree. Chapter 92 I told you to not to spy on me Frenchy took out his phone and called his girlfriend, telling her to set up bombs in the base and prepare to blow it all up. Are you serious? Yes. Now hurry. Time is of the essence. Okay, give me three minutes to prepare. You can give me the word any time after that. His girlfriend was shocked, but Frenchy's anxious tone made her realize that the problem must be really urgent. She didn't question him any further and simply said that she understood before hanging up. She hurriedly prepared to blow up the base. Billy and Frenchy walked to the car that they parked outside. Billy used the computer in the car to connect to the base network and prepare to activate the bomb. Whoosh. Less than a minute later, Homelander noticed Frenchy in the car and landed next to it with Li Yu. Their rapid descent brought a violent gust of wind. Hello, please open the window. Homelander tapped the window of Frenchy's car with his finger. Haha, I'm so lucky. It's Homelander. I'm your loyal fan. Frenchy opened the window with a massive smile, acting like an excited fan seeing their idol. Don't be too excited, no. I'm here for a mission. Can you show me your ID card? Homelander immediately switched his signature fake smile on, speaking in a gentle tone to Frenchy. Well, do you have a warrant don't misunderstand, I just don't believe that you have the right. Frenchy was a little surprised to find that Homelander didn't he come alone. A young man in a tight superhero uniform was following him. The young man's appearance was a little strange, and it took a moment for Frenchy to remember that the Seven had recruited a new member. Could this man be it Frenchy didn't he know what to do with this information? Blowing up the base is one thing, but he wasn't he sure that it could bait both Homelander and the newbie. If only Homelander was lured away by the explosion, their group would still be unable to move, since the newbie would still be here. They would definitely be discovered. What should we do, what should we do? Frenchy's mind was going a hundred miles an hour, anxiously thinking of a way out. At the same time, he thought about words to delay Homelander. Heh, I am Homelander, the superhero who protects the masses. Of course, I have the right to check your ID. Now show it. The smile on Homelander's face suddenly disappeared when Frenchy didn't he cooperate immediately. His expression changed so quickly, it was as if he was in a stop-motion movie. All right, all right, I'll take it out now. Frenchy couldn't he defy the cold-faced Homelander. He knew everything about Homelander behind the kind facade. If he delayed too much, Homelander might just blast him with a laser beam. Frenchy spent the next 10 seconds rummaging around, pretending to be looking for his ID card. He then handed it to Homelander, who waited impatiently for him. Li Yu just looked at them coldly and did not say a word. Homelander took Frenchy's ID card, glanced at it, and handed it back. What S in your car open it for me? Homelander asked again to Frenchy. Well, now, there's no need to do that. There's nothing inside. Frenchy pretended to be nervous. There actually wasn't he anyone in the car. Billy had already left and hid somewhere else. If there's nothing, why are you so nervous Homelander said. Without waiting for Frenchy to open it, Homelander used his X-ray vision to look at the car. Coincidentally, three minutes had passed. From some distance away, Billy sent the command to detonate the base with his computer. Boom. Li Yu could hear the sound of an explosion with his super hearing. It must be even clearer for Homelander. Thunderclap, you stay here. I'll go take a look. Whoosh. Homelander didn't he have to think twice. He didn't he see anything unusual inside the car anyway, so he left the situation to Li Yu and soared beyond the speed of sound to the sky flying towards the source of the explosion. Li Yu was left all alone. All right, Billy, you don't need to hide anymore. Come out. Li Yu casually said that after he watched Homelander fly away. Wahoo there's nobody hiding here, is there? 
Frenchie was caught off guard by Li Yue's words, but he immediately covered his surprise with a simple and honest smile. He gestured to the car, indicating that there really wasn't he anyone else there. Drop the act already. I know very well that Huey and Billy captured Translucent and hid him here. I meant you no harm I would be he just told Homelander about you, otherwise. Billy, you should just come clean. Li Yu interrupted Frenchie and revealed what they had done. Hey, buddy, I'm right here. Can you tell me how you know all this? A voice came from a place dozens of meters behind the car. Li Yu turned his head and saw a man in a black coat with a black beard and a laptop in his hand. The man walked out of his hideout and curiously asked Li Yu. That person was Billy. Don't worry about how I know about you. Lead me to where you locked up Translucent. Maybe I can help you with your problem. Instead of answering Billy, Li Yu demanded to be brought to Translucent. All right, Thunderclap, sir, come with me. Billy, why are you? It's fine. If he wanted to attack us, he would have done it long ago. We are no match for him. Billy then brought Li Yu to where they had locked up Translucent after dismissing Frenchie's protest. Billy's words were not wrong. If Li Yu really wanted to deal with them, he wouldn't he need more than three seconds. Billy led Li Yu into a room. The situation was a little surprising to Billy and Frenchie. Translucent had somehow escaped the cage and was now fighting Huey for something. Fortunately, the remote control was still in Huey's hand. A thunderclap, why are you here are you here to save me great? Get rid of these people. Translucent turned his head to the door when he heard it creak open, he saw someone familiar between Billy and Frenchie. They had only met twice, but the familiar person was part of the seven, just like him. Translucent really thought that Li Yu had come to save him. He did not expect that Li Yu would raise his hand and shoot a small ball of blue light at him the moment they met. It was so fast that he had no time to dodge. I told you not to spy on me. Serves you right. Chapter 93, Conditions The blue ball of light was made up of tiny electric arcs, but it strangely emitted an inexplicable blue light. It was so fast that it gave Translucent no time to dodge, and he was hit right on the body. Huey was shocked by Translucent's shout. He didn't he expect that a soup of the seven would come here. Huey reflexively pressed the bomb detonator in his hand. Bang. Translucent didn't he have the time to react as the bomb exploded inside him. Coincidentally, the blue ball of light just happened to hit him as well. Poof. A strange sound echoed. If someone slowed down time, they would see that Translucent's entire body was destroyed by the bomb in his body, his skin slowly breaking apart like a dried up riverbed. The blue ball of light concurrently exploded into countless arcs of blue energy, instantly wrapping around Translucent's breaking body. The blue lightning flashed and jumped around Translucent's body. It was like countless man-eating bugs that devoured Translucent, down to his skin and bone. It then suddenly shrank into a ball, compressing smaller and smaller until it disappeared. The process felt like forever, but it actually took mere 8 or 9 minutes. Everyone in the room except Li Yu was stunned by the bizarre sight. A living person was swallowed by a blue ball of light the size of a ping-pong ball that Li Yu casually flung. Not even dust was left. If that ball had been directed at me. They couldn't he help but think that in their heart, but they didn't he dare to finish that sentence. The answer was obvious, none of them could defend against it. This. What? What's going on? Huey stuttered out of fear. Billy and Frenchie were a bit better at maintaining their composure, but they also stared at Li Yu, waiting for his explanation. It's nothing, just a small trick. Li Yu said with a soft voice and a smile as if he had nothing to do with the terrifying scene. The small ball of energy was similar to the one that Li Yu made in front of Thor while they were in Odin's vault. Only this time, Li Yu tried adding some blue energy from the sea of his soul. The effect was alright. The explosion range was not as large as a ball made purely from lightning, but it could erase a person without leaving any evidence. It was a very practical skill. Now then, I helped you solve your problem. I guarantee that Translucent S corpse would never be found, and they would never connect his disappearance to you. But I hope you could provide an equivalent exchange to me. Li Yu continued. His tone of voice had not changed at all. It was as if he hadn't he just murdered Translucent. 
although, technically, it was Yui who killed Translucent. Li Yu only helped them hide the corpse. Just say the word, we'll do anything that we can. Billy immediately replied to Li Yu. It's not a big deal. I know that you held hostility against the Seven, and I want to stop you from taking revenge, I just have one condition, leave Homelander alone for the next month and a half. Of course, you can collect evidence on the other members of the Seven, but you can't let others notice. Can you do it Li Yu said to Billy. He knew that Billy was the head honcho here. As long as Billy agreed, the others wouldn't he object. What do you mean conditions why a month and a half specifically, not a month or two what's the difference? Billy didn't he immediately agree to Li Yu's terms and instead asked in a curious tone. You don't need to know this. Do you agree or not? Li Yu's tone became a bit cold. There's no way that he would tell them that he planned to evolve his own power slowly and calmly by staying on Homelander's side. To be honest, Li Yu wasn't a fan of Billy. According to the show, Billy was the kind of person who would do anything to achieve his goal. He had even betrayed his friend several times. Even when his friend was caught, the only thing on his mind was avenging his wife, whom he didn't even know if she was still alive, at the cost of his friend's life. Being friends with him was enough bad luck for eight lifetimes. However, Li Yu was too lazy to care about these messed up things. As long as they agreed to his conditions, he would also do the same to them. Okay, we agree with your conditions. Did Billy have any other choice? Of course not, Billy knew very well in his heart that if he disagreed, he would not be able to get out of there in one piece. His only option was to agree to Li Yu's conditions. I hope you can abide by the agreement. You know very well the consequences if you don't. Li Yu said with a threatening tone. Li Yu summoned a blue ball in his right hand and played around with it. Billy and the others took a step back. They didn't even dare to look at the glowing blue ball. Translucent's horrifying fate was still fresh in their mind. There wasn't enough word to describe his terrifying death. Goodbye, everyone. Li Yu left the room after he finished speaking. He still had to wait for Homelander to come back. And he still played with the blue ball in his hand on his way out? Phew. Who the hell is he how could you find such a terrifying person? Huey couldn't he help but breathe out a heavy sigh of relief when Li Yu finally left their line of sight. Li Yu's presence just now was too great. He didn't he even dare to breathe loudly, out of fear that Li Yu would throw the blue ball at him in annoyance. He s thunderclap, the seven s newbies. He took over Lamplighter's seed. I have no idea how he knew us so well. He didn't he know just our names, he even knew we locked Translucent here. What we do know, however, was the fact that he wasn't he outright hostile to us. Otherwise, we wouldn't he be able to survive the day. Billy might not show it as much as Huey did, but he was also frightened by the ball in the U.S. hand. Billy wasn't he a coward, it's just that nobody could be absolutely calm when facing certain death. Not Huey, not Billy, and not even Li Yu. We just have to comply with his conditions, right Frenchie added. Of course. He is an ally. It's just a month and a half, we can afford to wait that long. And didn't he say that we can use this time to find dirt on the other members we already knew that our next target was Popclaw? Billy said. Can I quit Huey asked weakly. Huey was scared shitless. He still had his father in his family. His own death didn't he matter, but he wouldn't he be able to forgive himself if his father comes into harm. Chapter 94, Bank Robbery You want to quit why? Billy and Frenchie turned to Huey with the serious expressions. Frenchie was the one who asked him. I don't want to live in fear anymore. I'm just an ordinary person. I can't beat those soups. Didn't he you see it that guy just flicked his finger, and he instantly obliterated translucent, even though we had tried countless ways to kill Translucent. How are we supposed to win against that guy, I have a father at home. I can't bring all this to him. So I want to quit. Huey ranted in an angry tone. All the feelings he had suppressed the last few days exploded at this moment. Billy and Frenchie fell silent at Huey's rant. Yes, how could we defeat such an abnormal person? All right, just let it all out. After you're done venting, we'll talk about how to approach Popclaw. After nearly a minute of silence, Billy was the first to break the ice. 
Like I said, I want to quit. Who the fuck would help you with Popclaw? I just want to go home and see my father. Huey suddenly roared at Billy. This was the first time that Huey had spoken so loudly to Billy. It seemed that today's events had really scarred Huey's heart. I know that what just happened was a big blow to you. It's the same with us. But don't talk about quitting ever again. We're not a fucking band, you can't just quit. Don't forget, Translucent just died in your hands. You have soup blood all over you. It's in your best interest to join us. Billy's tone gradually grew colder with Huey's roar. He stepped forward and confronted Huey with serious eyes. I didn't he. I didn't he kill Translucent. It was that person. It was he who killed Translucent. It has nothing to do with me. Huey's cowardice began to surface again. He denied that he had killed Translucent, but he avoided Billy's eyes. He unconsciously took a step back. Don't lie to yourself. I saw it very clearly. You pressed the button on the remote control. If not for that guy, this entire room would be splattered with translucent s blood. Including your body. Don't even try to deny that you killed translucent with your own hands. You have blood on your hands. If you quit, I will tell it to everyone. You and your family would never escape the seven. Billy approached Huey step by step, threatening words coming from his mouth. Huey was forced to retreat by Billy's imposing manner and words until his back hit the hard wall. Only then did he have to stop. Huey's eyes were filled with fear. He had never seen Billy like this. Billy seemed to be even more terrifying than those superhumans, making Huey shiver with just words. All the hair on Huey's body stood up. The room fell into a dead silence. Billy stared at Huey, who was too scared to say anything. All right, all right. Enough with the fighting now. We just went through a life or death situation. Billy, don't push Huey too far. Frenchie quickly tried to defuse the situation, pulling Billy away from Huey. And you, Huey, don't talk nonsense about quitting. We finally got rid of Translucent, why are you quitting? We have the same goal, right? We should be partners that trust each other. Frenchie then turned to Huey, who still had his back against the wall. I'll take you to as silence as yes. Simon, let us cheer for our new team. Frenchie took the lead and extended his right hand. Billy had nothing to lose by joining in, so he placed his right hand on Frenchie's. Huey was silent for a few seconds, but after seeing Frenchie's encouraging eyes, he finally joined in. Today marks the establishment of our team. We only have one goal, getting rid of those sons of bitches in the seven. For our goal. Hurrah. The three of them shouted the last word together, Huey's voice was a little soft, but he shouted nonetheless. Now, let us talk about Popclaw. Li Yu had no idea what happened between those three, nor did he care. In any case, his goal was very clear, to steal all of Homelander's strength. For that purpose, Li Yu had stayed in Vought's employment for almost a week, sticking close to Homelander. Other than sleeping and going to the toilet, he was basically always within 20 meters from Homelander. Even while Homelander was eavesdropping on Madeline's office, Li Yu stayed close, albeit outside Homelander's line of sight. He found a very good spot next to Madeline's office. There were chairs and tables there, and he could sit here, pretending to be resting while drinking coffee. Homelander obviously knew that Li Yu was there, but he had no intention to kick Li Yu out. Almost every day throughout the week, the police asked for assistance from the superheroes. God only knows where all these criminal activities come from. For each request Homelander received, he always brought Li Yu to fly to the scene. Due to Li Yu's constant public appearance beside Homelander in the past week, solving crimes and protecting the people, Li Yu's popularity rating continued to rise. Right now, it was at the point that people would cheer and even surround Li Yu like monkeys if he so much as stepped out of the building. Ever since the first time he got surrounded by people, Li Yu stopped going out alone. He had never been an internet celebrity or a star in his previous life, so he had no experience in dealing with these situations. All he could do was make a lot of jokes. And of course, the damned media used his jokes as news material the very next day. Li Yu almost couldn't he hold himself from destroying the media company. Thunderclap, stop drinking, we need to go. 
The police called us again. Homelander stopped his eavesdropping and greeted Li Yu, who was drinking coffee. He didn't he wait for Li Yu's reply and immediately picked up Li Yu, before flying out of the Va Tower to the scene of the incident. Dozens of seconds later, Li Yu and Homelander landed outside a bank. The bank had already been tightly surrounded by the police, but for some reason, the police did not take any action. Sir, what's going on? Homelander asked the policeman who approached him. A group of robbers robbed the bank and took dozens of hostages. Men, women, and even children. They all had guns and bombs. We had no choice but to call you. Please. Chapter 95, Little Girl. Don't worry, we're here. We can definitely solve this problem. What is the situation inside how many criminals are there please tell us in detail. Homelander smiled and asked the policeman who came up to him. There are more than 10 criminals, each of them armed with guns. Some of them have bombs strapped on them, with dead man switches. If they trigger it, the explosion would kill everyone in the bank. The policeman answered Homelander's question. Okay, I understand. Don't worry and leave it to us. Also, ask your people to step back a little to avoid accidents. Homelander said confidently, a fake smile on his face. Li Yu followed him silently behind. Okay, I understand. I will go and tell them to retreat. The police officer replied before turning around and ordering his men to leave. The police officers retreated dozens of meters from the bank. Homelander grabbed Li Yu and rushed toward the bank in an instant. In the blink of an eye, Li Yu found that he and Homelander had already arrived in an empty room within the bank. Homelander was much faster than a train. There is a total of 12 criminals inside. I'll leave them to you. Can you do it dealing with them means rescuing dozens of hostages. Your popularity would skyrocket, and after a little while, you wouldn't have to tag with me anymore. Homelander used his X-ray vision to look inside the bank's halls. He told Li Yu about what he saw but he didn't he intend to do anything by himself. He instead told Li Yu the criminals' locations and told Li Yu to deal with them. He only considered about rapidly popularity growing Li Yu's popularity. Li Yu was speechless when he heard Homelander's words. I really don't need to be popular. My real purpose is to follow you. Okay, I understand. Leave it to me. Obviously, Li Yu couldn't he say all that out loud to Homelander nor could he refuse Homelander's goodwill. He helplessly agreed to Homelander's proposal. Li Yu didn't he barge right in like before, there were still hostages. If he just wander in, the criminals would probably detonate their bombs and kill all their hostages along with themselves. Li Yu activated the God of Thunder state instead. He gathered the silver electric arcs that enveloped his body onto his right palm. The electric arcs behaved like small snakes, squirming in Li Yu's palm as if they had their own mind. To kill all those criminals in a single blow, Li Yu needed to carefully observe the situation with his X-ray vision. Of course, while hiding it from Homelander, the criminals herded the hostages through the hall. The hostages were squatting, with their hands behind their heads. Several armed criminals guarded their routes, while others gathered to discuss something. These gangsters were all wearing masks, exposing only their eyes. Their faces were completely hidden, but for Li Yu's X-ray vision, the masks might as well don't exist. But Li Yu didn't he recognize these faces anyway. Boss, we messed up. I didn't he expect the police to surround us so quickly. What should we do? One of the gangsters spoke in a hurry. Damn, what are you afraid of we have so many hostages in our hands. Even the police won't he dare to charge us. A figure with a remote control in his hand cursed. But boss, what if the police called the seven if Homelander comes here, we couldn't he escape. Ha, if he comes here, just blow up the bombs. Let us die together. It was a wonder where the criminal boss got his confidence from. He thought that he would have a chance to detonate the bomb in front of Homelander. Li Yu was loath to listen to any more of this nonsense. In any case, the figure holding the remote control was the closest to Li Yu. When Li Yu found the right time, he charged into the hall and appeared almost instantly in front of the person with the remote control and bomb strapped to his body. The criminal could only see a blur as a fist the size of a sandbag was closing into his face. Li Yu didn't he hold his punch against the man's head. The man fell to the ground, 
though with his head intact. Li Yu wasn't he that cruel. However, despite the intact skull, Li Yu wasn't he sure if the man was still alive or not. He wanted to incapacitate the criminal immediately, so he had to use some strength. Li Yu didn't he stop with just that man. He waved his right hand at a criminal, shooting one of the silver snake-like lightning in his hand. Like a living creature, the lightning snake accurately jumped to the next criminal. Boom! A dozen criminals fell to the ground in quick succession, almost at the same time. It was unknown whether they were alive or dead. It took ten seconds before the hostages in the hall realized what just happened. They turned all their eyes at Li Yu. Well, you're all saved. Get up. Li Yu said with a smile to the group of hostages squatting on the ground. Who needs an Asian like you to save us we want Homelander. We want Queen Maeve. Li Yu's smile froze when he heard the shameless voice from the hostages. Li Yu looked over and saw that it was a young white man. Yeah. We don't need an Asian to save us. We want Homelander. Get out of here and ask Homelander to save us. Get out, get out, get out. A few white men suddenly stood up in the crowd. They seemed to be with the young man just now and shouted at the same time, telling Li Yu to get out. Li Yu's mood immediately dropped. I don't even want to save you. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. The voice became louder and louder. It turned out that a few more people joined in the chant to kick him out. To be honest, the situation where he was scolded for saving people made Li Yu unbearably angry. Li Yu clenched his fists tightly, trying to resist the urge to beat them all to death. Right before he lost control of himself, he noticed a figure running towards him. The figure spoke with a clear and crisp voice, and it was in familiar Chinese. Big brother, are you upset I'll give you a lollipop. Li Yu lowered his head and saw a little girl who was only a few years old standing in front of him. She looked up at him with glittering eyes. She offered an opened lollipop with her small hands. Unfortunately, she was still very short. No matter how hard she tried, her hands could only reach Li Yu's waist. Chapter 96, Bank Explosion Every time I'm upset, mom would buy me a lollipop. Then I become very, very happy. Underscore. Li Yu's anger instantly melted. He squatted down to face the girl, and then he took the lollipop she offered. Mom said that big brother saved us, so I give the lollipop for big brother. Please eat it if you're upset. The little girl did not wait for Li Yu's reply. She immediately turned around and ran into a beautiful woman's arms. The woman lovingly stroked the little girl's head and then looked at Li Yu, revealing a smile. Thank you for saving us. The beautiful woman spoke in the same Chinese as her daughter. The woman's face was a spitting image of her daughter, they were both Chinese. Who knows how she got here and got involved in the bank robbery incident. Get out, get out. However, Li Yu's good mood was completely destroyed by the still chanting people. Li Yu helplessly looked at them. He found that the group of hostages had already been divided into two groups. One group was the one who was condemning Li Yu. There were less than 10 people, but on top of the few white guys in the beginning, several black people also joined in. The other group was the people who stayed away and tried to not get involved. They simply stood to the side, waiting for the police to rescue them. Wow, look, Homelander is here. He is here to save us. Homelander, tell your sidekick here to scram. We only need you. Just before Lee you could do anything, a cry suddenly came from the first group. At the same time, a voice came from behind Li Yu. Hey, Thunderclap, it looks like they liked me more. It was Homelander, who walked to Li Yu's side and waved at the hostages. He then whispered words to Li Yu's ears. Thunderclap, I can't say I approve of how you deal with them. You have to make it clear that we are soups. We have superpowers. How could you let those inferior humans step all over you so, let me teach you a lesson today. We the soups are the masters of this world. Watch carefully. Li Yu was a little confused by Homelander's words. He had no idea what Homelander would do. He could only watch as Homelander walked to the group that condemned him. I heard that you guys are my fans. Homelander asked with a meaningful smile. Yeah. We love you. We're your greatest fans. 
a few people in the group replied. Perhaps some of them really liked Homelander and dreamed that Homelander would someday save them from danger. But most of these people actually didn't worship Homelander all that much. They only criticized Li Yu to vent the pressure and fear they felt from the gangster just now. They thought that Li Yu wouldn't dare to attack them, so they took the opportunity to spit their acerbic words at the normally lofty superheroes. It was a golden opportunity so that they could someday brag that they dared to scold a superhero. Oh since you're my fans, you would love to get my signature, yeah. Of course, it is our honor to get your signature. If they didn't know better, people would think that this was a fan meeting event instead of a hostage rescue. Hmm, wait, I don't have a pen with me, how could I sign without a pen oh? I know. I'll use this to give you a signature that you will never forget. Homelander's smile disappeared instantly, and a strange red light suddenly glowed from his eyes. Two red beams swept past, and the people who scolded Li Yu were all bisected. They died very miserably. Ah! Uh, murderer! Everyone, run! He is a murderer! Silence! If I hear anyone make a peep, that will be your last! Homelander shouted loudly at the rowdy group of people, his eyes still glowing red. They had no choice but to cover their mouths. They didn't he dare make a sound. Li Yu was shocked by Homelander's actions as well. He didn't he expect that Homelander would go this far. Homelander killed those people just for a few insults. Even though they were criticizing Li Yu, not him. Li Yu glanced over and saw that the little girl's mother was covering the little girl's eyes and mouth with her hands, out of fear that the girl would make a sound and get them killed. How is it Aaron T you happy I gave you exactly what you wanted? We are soups. We're chosen by God, the ones that should rule this world. The lives of those puny humans are worth no more than ants for us. However, we can't let the media know about this incident, so. Homelander turned around, his eyes still red. He looked at the criminal that Li Yu had knocked down with a punch, the one with bombs strapped on, and then fired his laser beams. Boom. The high temperature instantly detonated the bombs. A wall of fire and shockwave swept through the room. Li Yu and Homelander would be perfectly unharmed from just this much, but those hostages had no chance of surviving. At the critical moment, Li Yu turned to look at the little girl and her mother again. Then, his figure flashed in place. Bang. Whoosh. The violent explosion and ruthless flame swallowed the hostages. The invisible shockwave shattered the glass in the windows into countless pieces with a burst of crashing noise. Li Yu could feel the heat and the impact of the explosion. His battle suit was incinerated, leaving him naked and dirty like a beggar. After more than 10 seconds, the explosion gradually calmed down. Only the figures of Li Yu and Homelander were still standing there. The broken limbs on the ground were like hell on earth. There were burn marks everywhere. Don't you dare say anything when we get out. Leave everything to me. As long as you follow me and stay loyal to me, you could do anything you want. Homelander said to Li Yu. Instead of walking out of the bank, Li Yu turned around and looked at the scene of the explosion. He did not know what to think. Homelander did this for him, but Li Yu did not feel any gratitude. We apologize we were too late. The robber detonated the bomb right as we entered. We couldn't save them, all those innocent people. I am sorry, everyone, I have disappointed you. When they walked out of the bank, a pained and regretful expression immediately entered Homelander's face. His expression changed so quickly, it stunned Li Yu. Both Li Yu's and Homelander's battlesuit was damaged by the explosion. With Homelander's superb acting, he actually succeeded in garnering sympathy from the masses. We don't blame you. You have done your best. Yeah. It's not your fault that those criminals were too brutal. Chapter 97, Time Passed By One must admit that Homelander's acting skill was top-notch. If he participated in the Oscar, he would definitely get at least one award. In the end, the spectators didn't he push the blame on the superheroes with insults and accusations like in certain other movies that Li Yu had seen. Not only that, some people even began clapping and praising Homelander and Li Yu, who were wearing tattered battle suits. The situation made Li Yu feel a deep sense of irony. No matter how good a real superhero was, they would always be criticized by people, while the fake Homelander was always praised. In Madeline's office, 
several people were discussing the matter of Translucent S disappearance. Vice President, Translucent has been missing for a week. The fans had been anxious to see him. If he didn't he appear in public, they would be suspicious. If someone took advantage of public opinion, it would be very unfavorable for us. Madeline's female assistant told Madeline. The matter had grown outside the assistant's control. She could only ask Madeline. Well. How is Starlight's support rating doing right now Madeline said after thinking for a while. Instead of translucent, she asked about Starlight. The incident last week raised her support rating considerably. She even surpassed some of the official members, such as Deep, A-Train, and Black Noir. However, Starlight was somewhat reluctant to cooperate with our arrangement. The female assistant replied. How about this we announced that Translucent had retired, and Vought International had decided to let Starlight take over his seat in the Seven. Translucent's disappearance could create a disaster, and delaying to deal with it wouldn't he magically solve the problem. It was better to just let Starlight take over his seat. The public might have doubts, but if the operation went smoothly, Starlight's popularity could grow again. It just so happened that Starlight already surpassed Deep and A-Train in support rating. She even surpassed Black Noir, ranking only a little lower than Thunderclap and Queen Maeve. It was clear that following Homelander around for the past week had been very effective in boosting Lee U.S. popularity. He almost caught up with Queen Maeve. If not for Lee U.S. racial identity, he might have surpassed Queen Maeve already. It couldn't he be helped, Lee U.S. God of Thunder State was just so cool that loyal fans flocked to him. But, Vice President, Starlight is still against our arrangements. What should we do? The female assistant said in a low voice after hearing Madeline's decision. Let me find a time to talk to Starlight. Just get her character and publicity plan ready as soon as possible. Also, prepare all kinds of emergency excuses. Don't let anything go wrong. Now go get the arrangements ready. As you say, Vice President. Please inform me if you need anything else. Another day had passed, Li Yu had managed to keep his expression calm and natural, but his heart was as turbulent as stormy seas. He was criticized after saving others. He was obviously upset, and the thought of beating them up even crossed his mind. But he didn't he expect that Homelander would actually go through with killing them. Not only those who criticized him but also the innocent bystanders that happened to witness him. But what disturbed Lee Yu the most wasn't he Homelander's cruelty, it was himself. He could have used his superpower to save everyone, yet he didn't he do that. He only saved the mother and daughter who were both Chinese. He had let all the other innocents swept up by the explosion and die under his watch. All because he wanted to hide his ability from Homelander. Or, to put it more callously, Li Yu was reluctant to lose the opportunity to grow his strength by being on Homelander's side. That's why he had suppressed his power, doing everything to avoid Homelander's attention. Today was no different. Li Yu discovered that his personality gradually changed after entering this world and joining the Seven. Or perhaps it was after discovering the increase in his strength just by following Homelander around. Li Yu wasn't he a saint in the past either, but if he had seen someone that wasn't he his enemy being endangered, he would almost always help them. But the current Li Yu didn't he even feel regret when he let all those people die without doing anything. He even found himself yearning to be like Homelander, who could do as he pleased and kill everyone he disliked. Li Yu could only reprimand himself in secret. Even if he couldn't he be a true selfless superhero, he had to at least keep his conscience clear and not kill the innocent. Satisfied with that thought, Li Yu assessed his body again. After a week, Li Yu's strength had grown by almost 16%. His total strength was now almost three-tenths of Homelander's. At this rate, Li Yu would become as strong as Homelander in less than a month though, that was only in terms of physical strength. At that point, Li Yu would no longer be like anything he was now. He would basically be glued to Homelander's butt. Soon, more than 20 days passed, and it had been almost a whole month since Li Yu arrived in this world. Nothing major had happened in the past 20 or so days. It was unknown if the people from the main lead S group were really abiding by their promise to Li Yu or if they were delayed by an unrelated matter. In any case, they had not made any big moves. Today marks the day that Li Yu had reached 7 tenths of Homelander's strength. 
but it wasn't he all good news. He found that despite still following Homelander around, his growth had slowed down considerably. Li Yu felt a little depressed. At his estimate, a day with the current growth rate only amounts to less than a thousandth of Homelander's strength. Any progress was good, but such a huge gap was unacceptable. At this rate, Li Yu would need almost a year to match Homelander. A year might not sound like long, but Li Yu didn't he have that kind of time. Chapter 98, Compound Number 5 Madeline had repeatedly tried to talk Li Yu into acting on his own and leaving Homelander's side during the past 20 days, but Li Yu had refused. Just as he was thinking about this, Madeline's female assistant came to Li Yu's side and informed him that Madeline was looking for him. Li Yu helplessly followed her. It was obvious what Madeline would talk about, it was to tell him to act independently. On the way to Madeline's office, he happened to see Homelander, who pretended to be looking at his own portrait. It was obvious that he was peeping at Madeline. After greeting him, Li Yu knocked on the door of Madeline's office. Come in. Li Yu opened the door after hearing Madeline's voice. He walked into the office and sat opposite Madeline. This time, Madeline seemed to be determined to separate Li Yu and Homelander. She used the excuse of helping Starlight's popularity to grow and proposed once again to put Li Yu in a different team from Homelander. But Li Yu refused as usual. Madeline finally lost her patience from the repeated rejection from Li Yu. Her tone was no longer gentle. If you still want to stay in Vought and in the Seven, you have to listen to me. Otherwise, you can get lost. Of course, Li Yu wouldn't he just be obedient. If he couldn't he stay by Homelander's side, there would be no point in staying in Vought. So Li Yu retorted back. Of course, I cannot object if you want me to leave Vought. But I know that we're in a crucial time concerning the entry of Vought's superheroes into the Ministry of Defense. Do you think that dismissing me like that won't affect you in any way if you believe that it wouldn't affect you, then you can let me go. I promise that I will never return. Li Yu even crossed his legs as he fearlessly said these words. You, you tactless little. Even someone as calm as Madeline was rattled by Li Yu's provocation, but Madeline had no cards to play against that. She had spent a lot of effort and even used a soup that could transform to secretly record a video of a senator. The blackmail with that video was barely enough to pass the proposal to allow superheroes to enter the Ministry of Defense. After the proposal go through voting, superheroes would officially be able to enter the Ministry of Defense, but just as Li Yu said, this was still a crucial time for them. Firing Li Yu would definitely affect her negatively. Madeline couldn't he accept the consequences, so she could only compromise. If you have nothing else to say, I will go first. The coffee I just made is going to be cold. Without waiting for Madeline to answer, Li Yu stood up and walked out of Madeline's office. But when he stepped out of the office, his eyes met with Homelander's. Homelander's eyes carried a cold, threatening look. Li Yu ignored the murderous look in Homelander's eyes and simply greeted him, before casually walking past. Phew, you're here. Madeline took several deep breaths to ease her anger before calmly greeting Homelander. Do you need me to teach him a lesson Homelander asked Madeline. He had seen everything that had just happened clearly from the outside. There's no need, for now. Let him be cocky for a while longer. We could deal with him in any number of ways after the voting period is over. The most important thing right now is to ensure that no changes would happen in the lobby of the Ministry of Defense. There must be no opposition. Madeline had already regained her calm as if nothing had happened. She spoke in whispers to Homelander. Don't worry, I already made the arrangements in the Ministry of Defense. I guarantee that we will get those votes. Homelander was confident about this matter. Indeed, unlike Madeline, he had never been worried about it. It was unknown where he got that absolute confidence. Li Yu was sipping coffee in the adjacent room while looking at the office, but he withdrew his gaze at that moment. You want to teach me a lesson unlike before, I'm no longer afraid of you. Li Yu had grown rather confident. His current strength had reached 70% of Homelander's. On top of that, he had his God of Thunder state, adamantium transformation, and weakened version of Black Emperor's energy absorption. Li Yu was confident that even if his current strength wouldn't he be able to overwhelm Homelander, he would at least be an equal match. Therefore, Li Yu had nothing to fear. 
That was also why he dared to talk back to Madeline. Li Yu felt that he had to change his future plan. Originally, he only wanted to obtain Homelander's strength by staying as close as possible to Homelander. But now that he had hit a bottleneck, he might as well find another way to increase his strength. In this world, the only other avenue that Li Yu knew could help with his growth was Compound V, the secret research project of Vought International. In fact, the superpowers that existed in this world weren't gifts from the heavens at all. They were all created in secret by Vought International. Vought International would seek the world for parents who were willing to give their children as experimental subjects, before pumping those children with a large amount of compound V. Later, when those children grew up, they would develop all sorts of superpowers. Homelander was the most successful product of this baby program. He was injected with an immense amount of compound V when he was young, resulting in his mutation into a soup. He spent his childhood in Vought's laboratory. The lack of care and love in his youth caused him to become a violent and cruel person when he grew up. His abilities made him almost invincible. There were almost no weaknesses. Vought International gradually grew wary of him, because there would be nothing to stop him if he ever went rogue. He would become a disaster for humanity as a whole. The Black Noir in the comic was a clone of Homelander, with all the same abilities but stronger. He was safety insurance created by Vought International to stop Homelander if they ever lose control over him. However, there seem to be some changes to that in the show, so there is no need to consider it here. Madeline had exploited Homelander's longing for a motherly love to firmly control him in her grasp. Li Yu hadn't he really considered using Compound V until now, primarily because there were immense side effects when used by adults. Moreover, there was a great chance that it would just fail. On top of that, Li Yu didn't he even know if Compound V would work on him. He had been able to gather strength just by being on Homelander's side, so he never really entertained such a risky idea as taking Compound V. But now, Li Yu had to change his plan. Even if Compound V was ineffective against him, he could still bring some samples back to Marvel's world and get Tony to analyze them. Thunderclap, a plane has been hijacked. We need to go. Homelander suddenly came out from Madeline's office and interrupted Li Yu's thought. Chapter 99, Tit for Tat. Plane hijacking. Li Yu felt a little deja vu. Could this be the same plane hijacking as the one in the show in the show? Homelander and Queen Maeve went to rescue the plane, but after they eliminated the hijacker, Homelander accidentally destroyed the control instruments in the cockpit with his laser eyes. The hijacker already killed the pilot, so the plane was entirely out of control. The plane was in a free fall. No matter how Queen Maeve begged Homelander to save the people on the plane, Homelander mercilessly refused with various excuses. He said that he had no way to stop the plane and could only leave the people to their deaths. Li Yu felt that there were too many unusual factors in that incident. Why did Homelander destroy the instruments in the cockpit? Why did he not rescue the people on the plane? Homelander had made the excuse that he could not slow down the plane without making a big hole in the hull with his strength. However, Li Yu didn't he buy that excuse. It would be easy enough to save the plane by slowing its descent below the plane, maintaining its stability until it could safely land on the sea. Or, if keeping the plane intact was not an issue, he could have slowed the plane by sacrificing the other parts of the plane, leaving only the passenger cabin intact to land on the ground. Either way, it was possible to save the passengers. Even if those methods failed, they could be e try them. Yet Homelander didn't he even try any of them, which meant he never planned to save the plane, to begin with. In addition, he had always said to Madeline that he had a way to get soups into the Ministry of Defense. After the plane crashed, Homelander made a big deal about how the tragedy wouldn't he have occurred if Vought International and the Ministry of Defense worked closer together. It wasn't he difficult to suspect that this hijacking incident was orchestrated by Homelander. The purpose of the hijacking was to manipulate the Ministry of Defense's officials into agreeing to sign the plan to integrate soups within their ranks, to ensure that they wouldn't be the passenger of the next tragic flight. If the soups were integrated into the Ministry of Defense command, then at least superheroes like Homelander could act quickly to save them. Li Yu was deep in his thought, but Homelander didn't he care about them as usual and picked Li Yu up before flying. Their supersonic flight didn't he take long to catch up with the hijacked plane. The plane looked normal from the outside, but a group of unknown terrorists wreaked havoc within it. 
Homelander silently flew to the cabin door and ripped it from the hinges with one hand. The people inside cried in alarm as the pressure destabilized. A terrorist that stood near the door was sucked out of the plane, leaving only a scream. Fortunately, the passengers were all secure in their seats, so they were not sucked out. Homelander instantly killed all the criminals in the cabin, leaving no survivors. Wow, Homelander came to save us, we are finally saved. Homelander is so cool, he killed the criminals in seconds. Homelander, let me give birth to your child. That one seems to be different from the previous ones. Don't worry, I have already dealt with the hijackers. Everyone, sit in your seats and don't move. Thank you for your cooperation. Lee Yu closed the cabin door after the criminals were taken care of. The trademark fake smile appeared on Homelander's face. He even waved at the passengers. Lee Yu could only follow Homelander helplessly to the cockpit. The cockpit door was sealed shut. It seemed that the hijackers controlled the cockpit as well, though the plane was still flying smoothly. Wait. Should I take care of the terrorists inside the cockpit your laser sight is too powerful. It would be bad if you accidentally destroyed the instruments in the cockpit. Li Yu halted Homelander from ripping the cockpit door. He wanted to see what Homelander would choose. What thunderclap, are you questioning my ability? Sure enough, Homelander didn't he only reject Li Yu's proposal, he even turned around to glare at Li Yu. His voice was low, and his eyes were oppressive. Well, it's your choice. Li Yu ignored the murderous look in Homelander's eyes and said casually. Homelander stared at Li Yu for a while before turning his head back. A hint of surprise flashed in his eyes, but it quickly disappeared. Without wasting any more words, Homelander ripped the cockpit door open and shot his laser eye at the terrorist in the pilot's seat. I knew it. You did it on purpose. Li Yu mentally shouted as he followed Homelander. His sixth sense clearly detected that Homelander deliberately swept his laser sight at the instruments after killing the terrorist. I told you. So, what should we do now Li Yu said from behind Homelander. You better keep your mouth shut. You can't hope to withstand my anger. If it was actually an accident, Homelander's face should be shown some level of embarrassment. But the face that he showed Li Yu was full of anger and intimidation, threatening Li Yu to not rat him out. Wee woo. An ear-piercing alarm sounded. The passengers that had just celebrated their survival instantly fell into panic again. Some people even tried to get up and enter the cockpit to see what was going on inside. Everyone, please sit back down. It was only the alarm system that malfunctioned. Nothing else was broken. Homelander returned with his smiling face to comfort the passengers. The passengers sat back in doubt, but with the shaking hull and ringing alarm, there was no way they could calm down. Li Yu expressionlessly followed behind Homelander and arrived at the cabin door of the plane. So, you're leaving just like that. Li Yu couldn't he stop himself from saying that when he saw Homelander walk towards the cabin door, the ridicule in his words was not lost to Homelander. Thunderclap, it seems that you still haven't he realized who calls the shot around here. I think I have to teach you about that. Homelander finally decided that he had enough of Li Yu's repeated provocation. He glared coldly at Li Yu before a strange red light began to glow from his eyes. He was about to fire his laser eyes. Chapter 100, Dummy, Play a BGM. Not good, they're going to abandon us. Something must have happened to the plane. While Homelander and Li Yu were arguing, a panicked woman shouted loudly. Her panic infected the other passengers, who scrambled off their seats towards Li Yu and Homelander. Seriously, sit back down if you don't want to die. Homelander glared coldly at the rowdy passengers with his glowing red eyes. He shot a warning shot in front of the leading passengers, stopping them in their tracks. The passengers never expected that Homelander, everyone's idol that often showed up on TV, could become so terrifying. They all froze in place, afraid that Homelander would actually kill them if they made another step. No one dared to move forward, but they did not want to give up the hard-won hope of escape. They couldn't he decide to retreat or advance for a while, blocking the plane corridor. I beg you, please save my child. I don't care if you kill me, just please save her. She is still so young. A mother who held a child less than two years old slowly walked forward and begged Homelander bitterly. Shut up. Take another step, 
and I'll kill your kid where you stand. The mother shrank back after hearing Homelander's shout. Apologize. Apologize, and I'll pretend this never happened. Otherwise, I'll kill you and leave you to rot with them. Homelander returned his attention to Liu when the restless passengers had retreated. The red light in his eyes still burned strong, ready to kill Liu if Liu didn't he comply. Such nonsense. Fuck off. Liu replied after pondering for a while. Liu was thinking about whether he should use his fists or feet. What did you say? Homelander was in disbelief. He was prepared to accept Liu's apology, though he never intended to kill Liu so easily. He just needed an excuse to call off his attack. After all, this was a critical moment. If Liu inexplicably died, it would definitely have a great impact on their prospect to enter the Ministry of Defense. Homelander didn't he want that to happen. He had spent so much energy to orchestrate this hijacking incident precisely to accelerate the plan to bring soups into the Ministry of Defense. After that plan had succeeded, Liu's life wouldn't he matter. He could finish Liu off like an ant. While Homelander was stunned by Liu's words, he suddenly found that a massive silver fist was flying towards him. Bang! A loud noise similar to clashing metal echoed in the cabin, forcing the passengers to cover their ears. Liu had used all his strength in that fist. He maximized his speed, turned his hand into adamantium, and wrapped it in silver lightning. The horrifying mass of power ruthlessly smashed Homelander's face. You used that fake smile too often. Liu punched Homelander before Homelander could react. As expected, Homelander was sent flying by Liu's full strength punch, smashing through the cabin door behind him. Homelander flew for a few kilometers before he could stop his body. He hovered in the air, terrible pain and numbness on his face. He stared uncertainly at the rapidly falling plane in the distance. This was the first time that Homelander had felt pain since he was born. He didn't even feel anything when a missile exploded in his face. But now, a mere ant-like person had given him pain. Pain aside, he was incredibly humiliated. Homelander's rage exploded. Fuck the plan to enter the Ministry of Defense and all the future plans. All concerns about them were blown away by his anger. Right now, the only thing on his mind was to tear Liu into pieces. The rage erased the pain from Homelander's mind. He accelerated to his top speed, causing a series of sonic booms as he rushed toward the falling plane. His eyes once again glowed with terrifying red light. He unleashed the full extent of his laser eyes when he reached the plane less than two seconds later. Two pillars of red light blasted at the plane he would melt the entire plane just to vent his anger. However, even though his laser beam supposedly travel at the speed of light, the plane disappeared without a trace before the laser could touch it. The bizarre situation stunned Homelander with shock and fear. He had no idea what was going on. Seconds later, Homelander realized that a single figure had replaced the plane. He was very familiar with that figure. Everyone on the plane was very confused when they saw Liu sending Homelander flying with a punch. What the hell happened to these two people they just started to fight among themselves? But they didn't he have the leisure to worry about that question. Homelander had smashed through the cabin door, causing the pressure to suddenly drop. The few people closest to the door were almost sucked out. Fortunately, Liu reached out to help them. Everyone, hold on tight. This is going to be rough. Liu said to the passengers who were hurriedly grabbing the items around them. Liu then activated his superpower, teleporting himself and the entire plane to the surface of the sea. But the plane's momentum didn't he just disappear. The passengers felt like the whole plane was being torn apart and held to dear life to the items around them. With the buffer of the sea surface, the body of the plane was like a surfboard, gliding rapidly on the surface of the sea. After gliding for a few hundred meters, it just happened to slide on the beach, and the plane gradually stopped. Thank you for taking our flight. We have landed perfectly, I wish you a pleasant journey. Liu half-jokingly announced. The passengers slowly came to their senses. The plane had stopped, and they were still alive. Some of them began cheering for their survival. Everyone was pleasantly surprised. When one of them returned to their senses and tried to thank Liu, they found that Liu had already disappeared. Liu reappeared in midair, where the falling plane had disappeared from. This was the first time that he showed his flight ability in front of others. 
he floated in the air and watched as the vengeful Homelander rushed from the distance. Dummy, play a BGM. 